Hi there, we were trying something a little bit different, but actually it didn't really work out. I was trying to play, and um, there's a little thing we can do where we play the intro, but it didn't appear to work. So, um, are, are we are we getting through? Can you, can you hear me, mother? Um, so we've got a few people in the chat room, so just let me know there on the chat room, uh, are we back? People are saying it's offline. Somebody please tell me, are we online? So we're just getting somebody to check. Um, hi to BR Black Terrier Productions. Please tell us, can you see us? Uh, hi to Lone Wolf Triple Seven. Oh, Les Cliff is in the chat room. Hi to you. Train Sporting South East. Charles Curtis, Devans GWR. Please somebody type if you can hear me. You are offline. Oh. You are offline. So what's, ah, okay. what's gone wrong here? Okay. Uh, apparently Danny Boy 6483 can see and hear me. Uh, BR Black Terry Productions is offline. Something has gone wrong. So we're going to just briefly pause whilst we uh, try and sort this out. Um, I think there's some kind of a problem. So just bear with us a moment. Oh, Andrew, Adrian Parslow says it's online. Try reloading it. I'm online now. Ah, okay. So, um, okay, people are saying it's working, but I am not seeing anything. Let me just check on my phone and uh, let's well, just... you won't see it, you're online. <laughs> <laughs> no one, just... no, it, it's weird like that. I, if, when I'm live streaming, I can't see it on my channel. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Can you check it with yours? I can't see it on... You are, you're online. Apparently, we are online. Okay, so now we're going to do something fun. <laughs> You can see. Online. There so we go. Now we're going to do something fun. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> if okay. that didn't confuse everyone, I don't know what will. <laughs> Anywho. Anyway, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we appear to be online now. So right, I'll leave you to Our tech support can leave. So um, today's I drink. When I'm not wanted. Yes, you are not wanted. Go on, get lost. We are both drinking Strongbow Dark Fruits. So uh, that is the tipple of the day. So Josh Dawson, at last, yep. Uh, Tony Britton, got you, Jenny. Ooh, got to catch them all. Leslie Gilpin, wow, back after a damned advert. Yeah, it does that, doesn't it? Uh, Adrian Parslow, get users to refresh page. Yeah, um, if people are having difficulty, refresh the page, apparently. So, are we back? Um, Josh Dawson, who... Uh, 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 so br oh, yeah. You're so bringing one home. In other words, means the dark fruit. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, Transporting maybe. Southeast. How did GMRC go? I don't know. You tell us. How, how's it going? Um, yeah. Anybody who's involved, do feel free to let yeah. us know how you're doing. Um, but um, I've lost my train of thought. We tried to do something a little bit different and it failed. So we should work on that for next time. But it's really good to have you all along. And actually, I've just remembered something. I need to send my, my staff a message to bring up some of the merchandise. <laughs> so, Zoe, if you're down there, bring up one of the mugs. Um, let's see, bring... Oh, you, you... have you got a mug? Food delivery from the Silver Squad. Do you, do you, just to keep it going, I'll, go yeah. grab a, I'll grab a mug that you can drink out of, yes. Yeah, we now have crisps. Uh, but essentially, I wanted to show you some of the new merchandise that's arrived. And, uh, you yeah, know, just, it's just something a little bit fun. But, um, yeah, oh, BR Black Terrier Productions. Hi, who has a I Like Trains t-shirt? Oh, no. no, no, not me, no. no. But I have seen them around. I've just got some kind of a test card here going on. Mine uh, is uh, <laughs> for for those of you that like the, the the Walking Dead. Walking oh Slugger. Yes, it's uh yeah Negan Sluggers. That that is actually um, a very challenging looking baseball bat. <laughs> yes, he he much. does use it a lot for that purpose. Yeah. Um, so I just like to share with people before we get talking on the main gist of things. So we've got uh, a couple of new mugs here. You can buy these from the online shop. Uh, JK logo on one side and the Jenny Monday Club logo. Let's see if I can hold that close enough. 
Jenny Railways Monday Club, modelled after the sign up on Weir Yard. Uh, but I'm going to put that down there. So I'm not, not going to drink out of it um, because we have a proper drinking receptacle for alcoholic beverages. But we were going to talk <clears> a little bit about uh, rumours about the Backman Autumn release schedule. So... Uh, open to the floor a little bit here. Yeah. What do you think that Batman might be cooking up? And um, whilst they are the kings of announcing stuff years in advance, um, I think they're trying to um, do a few things where they do the Hornby route where it's like, we're going to do this. And by the way, here it is in the shops. So we thought we'd have a bit of speculation about what that might be. So over to you, Brian. Me. Yeah. Oof, dear. Put you well, on the spot. There's a spot there, you're on it. Yeah, um, for me, um, I really would like them to uh, re-release uh, quite a few of their um, second generation units. Oh, these like the 156 or the... Five, no, well, well, they're redoing the 158 at a massively overpriced figure. Mm. Um, of which I personally think is is absolutely ridiculous and a bit of a rip off. Um, but there's quite a few other things that they've done that they never made DCC ready. Whilst Class four diesel shunter, I've been waiting for that to yeah. become DCC ready. Well, they, for a they, long they, time. they produced a lot of diesel stuff that were DCC ready way before some of this second generation unit stuff came out, and also first generation units that that were DCC ready. Um, but a lot of the other ones weren't. So that's something which has been a bit of a bugbear for me, I'm afraid. Mm. So things like the 158, I know they're redoing it, but it's far too pricey. Um, things like the Voyager, I think it's about time they did, did a they Meridian. Do, was it the 168 as well? They've done the 168, the 165, 166. Uh, Have any of those been done DCC ready? None of them were ever DCC ready. So mm. whereas I know it can be... You know, relatively easy with some things to, to DCC fit these things, but why should you have to go to all that bother in the first place? A company like Batman should know better. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking there. BR Black Terrier Productions. I want the 64XX in NCB liveries, and I think that is actually um, on a broader note the uh, industrial liveries that some of these locomotives passed on into is a huge area which the likes of the Hornby Sentinel, W4 Peckett, shortly to come B2 Peckett, the 48 um, DS Ruston, um, Hunslet Austerities have done very well. There's a lot of these locomotives appearing in industrial liveries and they really are selling well. It's a huge untapped market. And yeah, just like you there, BR Black Terrier Productions, I think some of the XBR locomotives would be nice to see in some of these other liveries and not just the steam locomotives but the class 3 diesel shunter a lot of those got sold on into industry got uh, private owner liveries i'm thinking for example there was a fina livery in milford haven class 3 ncb had some of them it's a huge open goal that could very easily be plugged by Backman just announcing different liveries of some yeah, of these I models. Yeah, I agree with that, definitely. And I think that um, if Hornby are not going to do it, then maybe Batman should be the ones to do a proper 06, maybe. Yeah, um, I mean, the 06, again, uh, we've talked about this before. Uh, the last three major BR classes of diesels that have never really properly been done in 00, the Class 1, Class 2 and Class 6. Mm. And I think that the Class 6 is an obvious one. I know Hornby had their little railroad thing, the pocket rocket in their age. And really, when you know what a Class 6 should look like, that thing is woeful. Um, I'd love to see that. And I think the Class 2 as well had enough longevity to justify a being released. And Hornby have proven with the Sentinel and the W4 packet that a small short wheelbase 040 chassis is perfectly doable. So I think there's nothing really stopping these locomotives from turning up. I know like the class two in particular, um, you had the BR, the original BR green, BR green with wasp stripes, and also BR blue uh, pre-tops and tops numbers, but then they passed on uh, into industrial service. I think Bird's Metals uh, down near Nottingham, Leicester Way. They had one painted up. Uh, Loton Metals had one painted up. Um, there's a lot of scope for industrial liveries as well. If we just um, get onto a couple of the comments there before they disappear off the top of the page there. Um, Stuart Moore, 
Um, yeah, Green Forest 319. I'm looking forward to that. Just hope that they do a double O version. Mm. Uh, 319 is something of which I've almost paid out a lot of money for for a Ray to run from one of the uh, companies to do the kits. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're, they're very good kits and everything. They look brilliant, but at the same time, um, obviously a ready to run DCC sound fitted one of those in double O. Um, I would probably snap one yeah. of those up very I just want to grab a comment there before it disappears off the top. Lone Wolf 777. Oh. I'd love them to release the 484 Northern of the Santa Fe Railroad. Now, I have to say, I'm not at all familiar in the uh, North American outline locomotives, but certainly I think re-liveries um, are a really easy way of a company to maximise the return on a model and also cater for sectors of the market. So I, I completely hear you there that certainly uh, liveries of um, locomotives that um, maybe haven't been in the range for a while or never been in the range are something which I welcome almost as much as I welcome completely new models. And then also underneath we've got, um, uh, just to add to that comment from Stuart Muir, um, on the subject of Weir Yard, I've gone and got the Pico turntable. Well, uh, that's great. I'm really glad that actually people are are getting something back out of my videos. And the Pico turntable kit, I found it very easy to build and to fit. And uh, with a bit of adaption, they're quite easy to mechanise. I used Meccano. I had a lot of Meccano left over. But I think Pico do actually sell a turntable motorising kit. So you can make it run off an electric motor. And they've got immense play value. They certainly add a lot to operation, uh, to the operational interest. And uh, even in much later period modelling, some of these turntables at depots did persist for a long time. Mm -hmm. Some of them were used to do things like to turn locomotives and rolling stock to even out flange wear. I think the HST power cars sometimes, where they yeah. would get turned on them. Yeah, that's correct. So they yeah. did find a lot of use even after steam had ended on the... Uh, uh, on the main line, and we've got that Duvins GWR. I'd buy a Milford 03. Yeah, is that the FINA one? Uh, so it looks quite pretty. And did I don't know whether Fords at Dagenham also had some class threes in their very distinctive livery, they certainly had some class fours. And that's really for me why the class four needs to reappear in the range because they never released it in any of the private owner liveries. I know that um, they did announce an NCB livery and then it never turned up. So um, the Class 4s, there's a lot of private owner ones. Those Derwent Valley Light Railway, Fords at Dagenham, NCB, a lot of choice. And given how well Andrew Barclay, the Sentinel, the Peckets are selling, I think it's an easy way for Backman to kind of get a little bit of that industrial action without necessarily having to put a lot of expenditure in. Um, and I'm thinking through their range, certainly Class 8s as well. I don't think they've particularly explored, like the NCB liveried Class 8s. Yeah, there's, there's been a, a lot of different variations in, in the 08 to but they... uh, having industrial use. I mean, you're talking about things like uh, Foster Yeoman, for instance. Mm. Now, they had um, two or three of them. In fact, I think they've still got a couple. Mm. And uh, the paint jobs on them were quite impressive. Um, just because it's gone off the page there, and apologies that I, I missed it there, notice the growlers in the house. Welcome back, <laughs> mate. <laughs> and also, are we, are we, we, we have an alert. Are we have an alert. I know. Aruga, Aruga oh. alert. Warning, there is an emergency in progress. Train sporting south east. Red alert. A lot of glue on carpet. Wife going to kill me. What should I do? Buy a new carpet. <laughs> yeah, there should be like an emergency twenty-four hour. There, there is, there is very little you're going to be able to do about well, that. Well, no, carpet. no, no. I tell you, it depends <laughs> what glue have you spilt because if it's something like um, Humbrol polystyrene cement, just uh, open the windows and let that stuff evaporate, and the carpet should be all yeah. right. Um, if it's PVA, <clears throat> if it's water-based, the only thing I can think of is scoop up as much as you can <laughs> and then water, lots yeah. of water, and scrub. Yeah. Scrub those gussets. Yes, sir, scrub those gussets. <laughs> like there's nobody's business. Norman um, Princess there. Um, okay, you need more London transport livery. I kind of agree with this, but at the same time, not the last part well, of the comment. The London Transport 4TC set. No! Well, Do you know something? No, see, I've got to jump in on this okay apologies you, you but this is in. this is a gripe um the 4tc set that is preserved 
um, that's uh, owned by London Transport and it gets rented out to all these different gals and everything is the most horrendous thing in the world to sit on. All right. Wow, Bars on the windows. Um, <laughs> it's like no, going to jail. No air conditioning whatsoever. It's only a short set of coaches, and therefore they cram thousands of people in a short space, and you really do feel like you know you're in that prison van. I hate that set with a vengeance. Just my pa uh, a basher's point of view, um, but it looks nice. It does look nice, but no, my own personal piece, I can't stand it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but in terms of the, uh, I think it's the 57XX pannier tanks, uh, but I think Bankman have, between uh, limited editions and main range, released pretty much all of the London transport panniers that carried that livery mm. in model form. So they, sorry, I've been scoffing crisps here. So they do turn up second hand. Um, you can find them relatively cheaply. There are a few still available in the range. So they are out there. I think London Transport had maybe 10, 12 of them. Not all of them ran at the same time. And some of the later ones were replacement for earlier ones that they wore out. Um, but certainly there's there's no shortage. of those. Even I've got one. It'd be um, nice to have some more tube stock though. Potentially. But how big yeah. a market do you think there is? Oh, huge. The, um, the S8 stock... Batman did, which is the ultra modern one, mm. um, that sold out pretty quickly. And you can't find a new one of those now, and that's only a couple of years later. And they didn't scrimp on the amount that they made, so you know, yeah. I have to say, though, I was talking to the I think it was the CEO of Batman Europe at uh, Alexandra Palace, uh, did an interview with him. And one of the things we talked about was limited editions. And it turns out that actually, some of the stuff in the main range. Is actually more limited than limited editions. Now, if you order a limited edition from Backman, their minimum order length is 500. So anything that you see in a shop that's a limited edition is of at least 500. But in their main range, if they're testing out a livery that they're not sure, will it sell really well, will it not? They actually produce sometimes as few as 200. And there's been a lot of talk about the... SECR, the fully lined out livery of the C-Class that sold really well. And at one point, I remember seeing them turn up at about £550 each on uh, eBay. And what he told me was that one of the reasons for this was not because like, the full 500 sold out. That wasn't the case. They actually only made 200 of them to test the market for the ornate livery. Because they didn't want to be left with them going into bargain bins because it was an expensive livery to produce. So they tested the water and that in part is why they're so scarce not because everybody wants one but because there was only 200 to be had in the first place so some of these things that sell out really quick mm -hmm. do bear in mind that it could be because there weren't many made in the first place in the same way as of course with the real trap pacers that i've got um i have two of the silver and red uh, West Yorkshire You love lording that over Oh, people. I do. Only because, no, it, it's a shame really, but the, the, the mouldings got um, accidentally destroyed whilst they were making one of them. Um, and therefore, uh, one of the two numbered ones that I've got is only one of about 40 of them. And that took me quite a while to get that. But the, this is the thing. Going back years ago, I was explaining this to Jenny earlier with Lima, mm. they would get a batch of Locos in one specific livery um, and then basically they would apply different names and numbers a couple little details like where the mark light goes and stuff like that that they would glue on themselves um, and then release them as proper limited editions limited to 100 kind of thing and they did that quite a fair bit with class 47s so the difference nowadays is because the, the mouldings are more specific to not just a type of loco but also you know a subclass as well and things like that a lot more detail goes into the models it's mm. a bit more difficult to get yeah, a true proper limited much edition more, now. models now are much more accurate than they've ever been yeah. and that means that the way that lima operated you just wouldn't get away with that now no no you couldn't do that these days um there we go i believe you've uh, missed a big hello there Oh, Galaxy Media. Hi, Auntie Jenny. Well, that's Zach. I know that's Zach. That's my little nephew, Zach. And it's really good to see you there, Zach. Nice to uh, have you join in here. We shall try and keep the potty mouth to a minimum. <laughs> because uh, whilst, uh, whilst you use some of these naughty words every day, yes, you do, <laughs> you may be shocked to find that Auntie Jenny does as well. 
So um, uh, let's have a look. Um, oh, yeah, Tony Britton, bring out a really decent Avon side. Now, that actually, I could see that coming from one of the manufacturers. That and um, uh, a H Hudswell Clark as well. Um, there's a lot of these industrial type prototypes that really Hornby has just tapped the market. Their W4 packet, I was talking to Simon Kohler at, at Ali Pelly, and he said that actually the popularity of that, they knew it was going to be reasonably popular, but the amount of that popularity caught even them by surprise. And I think there's this massive untapped potential for these sort of locomotives. And one of the things that I know we talked last week, uh, no, the week before last, about uh, DJ models uh, going into rece receivership. <clears throat> one of the models that they'd announced, which I had on order, uh, luckily I haven't paid a deposit or anything, so I'm all right. But the um, Hunslet Austerity, they'd advertised they were going to be bringing out the Manchester Ship Canal. I think uh, MSC had two of them. And they were going to bring out one of those. So I do hope that that does turn up at some point. But I think they'd also announced the Hudswell Clark, uh, which was another uh, MSC staple. And I don't think we're going to see that now. But it would be nice to see if another <coughs> manufacturer picked up the baton. But yeah. with mainline diesels pretty much all spoken for, there's just those three uh, shunters. And, yeah. um, well, Daypol have announced the 21 and 29 they're in the pipeline, have been for years, but we might actually see them. What else is there? Apart from electrics, I suppose, 81 um, to 84. Yeah, there's, there's, there's still one or two it. things. I think, to be honest with you, it's more like the... Like the um, fell. <laughs> yeah, fell and things like that. I could see Helgen doing the fell. Yeah, I could, yeah. Um, yeah, Matt Wilson, um, any Portuguese 50s that have survived... I have to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. I know there was a bit of a tyre kicker that uh, went around trying to buy all kinds of everything at one point. And um, he was kind of like responsible really for uh, at least one of them being cut up because it was supposedly safer and we didn't actually have the money in the end. Did the same thing with a few diesels in this country as well. I'm not entirely sure if um, any survived, but I hope that at least one has. Um, also, uh, train sport in southeast. Do you think Batman um, do cross rail stock? I, I'm dubious. They look nice and everything. Don't get me wrong, but it's just <coughs> yet another um, second stroke, third generation unit. Mm. Um, but the thing is, it's the length of the units. Mm, just before it, it disappears off the top, there, I think Mark Wilson has possibly got the best advice for train sporting southeast <laughs> and his carpet issues. Yeah. Just get a new wife. <laughs> bit drastic but you know maybe it's cheaper, if it works cheaper than the new carpet <laughs> but less yeah, they... aggro isn't it yeah. <laughs> you don't have to move the furniture the cross rail units thing that you've got to remember is the length of those units is absolutely huge so therefore so would the model have to be so they could do like hornby did with the pendolino bring out the standard set and then just insert cars into it but that then becomes manically you know expensive yeah. and that. i don't know for me personally, there's a lot of other options. I would yeah. like to see a 442 Wessex unit, a plastic pig. Yeah, we've got Mark Wilson. What about a 304 electric unit? See, I oh. think that electric units are possibly a little bit niche. A Bankman no, no, of... no. A 304. They, these are units that date back to, help me out here, what, LMS? 1965, maybe something like that? Um, you're talking about proper heritage units. Right. Now that could definitely go for, you don't have to bring out a 4K, you can do a 3K, I know there was differences and in, in what have you in those, that'd be fantastic. Hmm. Leslie Gilpin, the original Trying Hornby, AC Electric was a Class 81, I think that was the one that um, Hornby 00 actually tooled up for, and they brought it out just before they went bust. And... Um, it, was, it, it makes it incredibly rare if you get a, a Hornby 00 one. They actually command quite a high price. And yeah, I think it is an 81. But then trying Hornby kind of persisted with it. a slightly cheaper version of it. They kind of cheapened it out. And the two pantographs, uh, Russell Benton said that, yeah, originally original 81 had two pantographs. I think a lot of the AC Electric had two pantographs when they were first mm. built. And what they found was actually it was extra cost. You, you just didn't really need two pantographs, so they yeah. did away with them. And I'm guessing there was some weight saving, certainly the equipment to uh, up the pan. Mm. 
would have been a weight saving and that's quite high up weight as well which would make them sway somewhat <coughs> well i mean going off different units though new mills um three two three right okay i i would love to have one with sound in it because of the the, the racket that it makes um but as the real thing it's absolute rubbish but this is kind of the same thing with the 175s that comment comes up more or less every week whether or not somebody should, somebody should make the 175 unit. Um, yes, somebody should make the 323. It's an amazing, you know, aesthetically, I suppose, really, you'd say. But the actual technology behind them is absolute rubbish. They are unreliable and things like that. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. In model In form, model form, it doesn't. Now. Yeah, because the Helgen Class 28... That sells pretty well, and actually in model form, that's a lovely model. But the real ones, yeah, no. yeah. I mean, the things about three two three, of course, is that when it starts up, it sounds like a TARDIS. So one one of them with it with it with it with a uh, a sound chip in would be fantastic. I like transport. What are your thoughts on HS two? Um, I think it's it's gone massively over budget. What it demonstrates is, I think it's necessary. We certainly need to upgrade the transport infrastructure in this country. But unfortunately, once you get all the consultants on board and everything gets gold-plated by the civil service, it's costing far too much. A railway should not cost that much to build, and that's the fundamental problem. Yeah. And until they address the way the money is just hosed out of the, of the system doing these things, I can't see these high-speed rail links really being good value for money. They should be. Um, they should be built, but not in the way that they're doing them because they're just wasting far too much money. HS2 it's, itself is needed. The, um, the capacity is needed in the country. Anybody who's travelling on cross-country trains, that's an area that needs sorting out as well. Um, but certainly West Coast and East Coast, um, having the fast route as an alternative, that is something which the country definitely needs. Yeah. Um, the capacity on the railway keeps expanding every single year. So we do need it. Um, however, like Jenny says, it's one of them, um, they really do know how to polish a turd. Mm. It's not something that should be glamorous. At the end of the day, it's needed. It's a necessity. There is no need to treat it like this month's movie star to get extra money out of the government. Mm. It doesn't need to cost that amount of money. And we've proven this in this country because after World War II, of course, because ourselves in the Yanks, we went and bombed every railway line in France, so we went over and we built them for them to replace them, and they were all high-speed lines which are a lot more capable than the ones of which we built ourselves. Mm. They did not cost that kind of money. So, you know, basically lessons to be learned that, of course, in this country we never do. Yeah, I mean, once upon a time we used to build railways quite affordably, like the Woodhead route, uh, yeah. a complete new tunnel, fully yeah. electrified, and uh, you know, we successfully delivered that project. Yeah. It was then massively underutilised, and you could argue that a lot of the traffic that it was built to move disappeared. But it proved that we could do these things. And you know, arguably, you could say that you know, reinstating the Great Central Railway would probably be a better way to go. The only problem is that huge chunks of that track bed have been built over, sold off. Um, but you know, rather than adding a little bit of extra capacity to existing routes maybe a cheaper way of doing it would be to reinstate uh, a completely gone route where you don't have the restrictions of building on a, a, an actual um, yeah. in-use railway which would bring costs down and you'd also serve places which aren't necessarily well served by rail anymore so you know you could, yeah. you could argue the great central route would be one to not fully reopen i don't think you could but certainly follow that kind of a route for HS2 instead. And, you know, maybe we shouldn't be trying to get people to London as fast as possible. What we should actually be doing is contemplating getting people to other places in the UK as fast as possible. So, you know, bill HS2, not so that people in Birmingham can get to London quick, but maybe so that people in London can get to Birmingham really quick. And, you know, uh, what we probably need is... Um, Manchester to Birmingham really quick would be useful. And yeah. what's that going to be, HS3? Well, uh, by the time they finish arguing over what they're going to build, when they're going to build it, what phase it's going to be, um, you don't really know. Um, as far as the East Coast Main Line goes, um, when that was electrified and the, the track was upgraded, 
that was only meant to be a, a, a temporary upgrade and by now it was supposed to be 240 mile an hour track and well, of course you I know. thought that the 91s and the Mark IV stock, they were originally built to be able to be retrofitted for tilting, and the idea was that they were the trains that could pound up and down the East Coast at speeds in excess of 140 miles an hour, yeah. and it never happened. Mm -hmm. And when you look at a 91, that's the reason that the suspension has all these weird holes and stuff, is because they were designed to be retrofitted we, with the tilting we do have We do have, though, a few places on the West Coast mainline, not many, mind, but a few places on the West Coast mainline, where you can actually get up to 125, 130 mile an hour. Mm. And I think that the 91s themselves might actually turn out to be pretty good on the West Coast mainline mm. um, if somebody was allowed to fit them with tilting. So... I suppose to an extent, you never know. Mm. But, 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 to get back to the model speculation, mm. what I was trying to say is that basically diesel models pretty much all done. There's an interesting comment there from Matt Wilson. Okay, which one? Right at the top. Did they ever make a Transpennine unit? Now then. What have you heard? Yeah, if you've heard anything, let us know. Because it's funny that... Now, going back to the Trix and Lilliput 124 units, I'm assuming you're talking about the original Penang units, the 124s, and if you are, then um, they've suddenly started coming up second-hand very, very cheap, considering the fact that once upon a time they were some of the most expensive things that you could buy. You said about two grand at one point. Yeah. I mean, bearing in mind, OK, you got the HO scale, but then you got the replacement bodies in the kit form that a lot of people put on them to make them full double O scale. Um... Yeah, quite expensive piece of kit, and now you can buy them cheap. With the rumours over a possible new delivery of from Batman, what do you think? Do you think it could be? I've heard from a model shop that a 124 could be being looked at. I don't know, has anybody heard anything else? Because I think if you take that rumour yeah. and apply it to... The way that prices are going on eBay, do quite a few people know something that we don't? Yeah, maybe so I don't do. know what about your thoughts. Would a class one two four actually sell? How how long were they? Six well, car, you said. Yeah, I mean this thing about the one two fours, they could just add more Mark ones into them as and when they needed them. Mm. So you know, I mean we could be barking up completely the wrong tree here, but um, well, it's how long did they which... tend to run it? They used to be five or six cars long. So could you envisage Backman releasing um, a, a a single train that long? I mean, what kind of price Well, to do a Voyager that's five car. How much does that cost? About 380. Would you pay that? And bear in mind that prices are just going up. So what are we going to look at? Like five, six hundred quid? Yeah. Would you pay that? For a class one two four, none of which survive, um, and they were withdrawn by what about eighty three, eighty four, something like that. Or did they? Yeah, even, um, did they even last that long? When did they go to? No, I think it was earlier than that. Maybe about eighty two. Google is our yeah. friend. Let's have a look, right? Class one two four, and what <coughs> liveries did they carry? Because that's just the... blue and grey, I think. Um, yeah, Matt Rice, there. You just said it was just off the screen there. Um, we just. Um, Scroll up there a second. I was just about to read it. Ah, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Ah, I can't find it. There we go. Um, with the Virgin Trains, yeah, from Oxford to North. Bear in mind, of course, that Virgin Trains will probably no longer exist soon. There's a good possibility they might completely disappear from the rail industry altogether. Right, uh, just um, class one, two, four. Eight six-car sets plus three spare cars. Ah. Built in 1960, so good for blue for, for green livery. Scrapped by 1984, so they just ah. got into the early 80s. Yep. So Oops. in terms of liveries, we're looking at basically green or blue-grey. I'm just looking down. Um, liveries. Initially introduced in a green livery, but they never carried the common whiskers that many DMUs at the time carried. A small yellow panel was added at a later date. You could have green without yellow, green with yellow, 
and then blue gray did they no they never went into all over blue they they went straight from green to blue gray it, it oh, would okay. appear but okay. there's not many of them actually i was surprised here there was only is it eight let's have a look yeah eight only eight sets. That... You know, I thought they were more than that. I'll be honest. I've so, seen photographs of them in shorter sets. Um, you know, I've seen I've seen photographs of them in sets of three. Um, really? Yeah. That's very short. Yeah. Um, Would that be yeah. right at the end? Maybe as yeah, stuff quite was getting possibly, withdrawn. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So let's have a look. What we've got here. Um, Patrick Ling. Good evening. Good to see you. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that I know I like transport. You're talking about HS2 money being better spent on Welsh railway improvements. Well, actually, the Welsh get their own budget for railway improvements. That's the reason why, um, basically, it's kind of unfair, really, what money gets spent where. Um, each different area then has to, as good as basically, beg for funding each year um, to say, we want to do this, this, and this. And then it's then down to whoever it is that's in charge of the public purse to turn around and say this area can have that and this area can have this. Mm. But the same money, for instance, if they didn't, if they abandoned HS2, that same money then then couldn't go to Welsh Rail and Railway Improvements. It goes straight back into the public purse and Welsh Railways, they would basically have to beg again the following year and hope they can pick up some of the change. So it's a very unfair way of doing it, but that seems to be the case with most things that the government do with Mm. You know, and I also see a lot of um, a lot of people have said that it tends to be spent on London and the South East mm. in detriment to the North. So I've, we've seen a lot of that with the, the government cuts that the North and, and Wales and anywhere that's well away from London has seen cuts. But actually, London has still seen an increase in budget. We've yeah. seen money spent on Crossrail and all that. And we do get neglected. I mean, the... Um, this this northern powerhouse nonsense. <laughs> have, <laughs> have you seen any evidence of this? We're in the north. We're not seeing it. <coughs> but um, let's just uh, quickly name check. Steve Arnold, hello to you from Grants Pass in Oregon. We talked wow. about Oregon the other yeah. week, actually. Uh, Oregon is somewhere I'd love to go and visit, actually. Well, Kidok, let's have a look. A uh, um, big hello to Don Heath as well. Yeah. Um, Josh, yes, Jenny is definitely enjoying it. They're actually really nice crisps as well. They are. There's like six bags downstairs. Zoe, Zoe went shopping hungry. It was just like six bags. Mm. <laughs> That's what I'm eating for the rest of it. I've got donuts oh, down there as well. Don't forget. Class one, two, three. How different were they? I'm, see now, this oh, is another option. Cardiff Pompey. Oh, now, okay. if Backman were to tool it very cleverly, yeah. would they get more than just the oh, wasn't one, two, the one, two, three, the version that had the corridor connection on the front? I don't know. I'm going to find out. Yeah. Uh, bear with me. Google is your friend. Uh, British Rail Class 1, 2, 3. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. It looks a bit like the Class 411, to be honest. It looks like a 309. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like a 309 electric oh, one. Oh, the last of the first generation DMUs built for BR. Oh, fair, Alan, sorry we didn't say hello to you. It's, sometimes it's difficult keeping up with the chat, and mm. sometimes we do miss people, so apologies for that. Hello and welcome. It's diesel mechanical. Um, mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Oh, see now, the class 123, I would have thought, would be a better bet than a 124, because it says here that 40 four-car units were built in a four-car. Oh, wow. Car. A four-car unit, it would be actually more saleable because the price would be a bit lower, more affordable. And the fact that there were 40 of them as opposed to eight does mean that um, that I think that, yeah, they these actually, I'm just going to have a look. For the... Well, while you're looking at that, uh, Matt Wilson, um, is it true that 91s originally could not run within a certain distance to each other on the same line when they were first delivered. Yes, this is very true. Or they'd blow um, out all the substations. It's, it's, well, they wouldn't blow them out. Basically, um, not enough power to keep them um, you know, uh, fully powered in any particular section of track. Um, it, it's, it's an ongoing problem we've had in this country, and each time a new electric train, locomotive or unit, the same problem comes across every time. At the moment, the issue is with um, is still with the likes of three seven sevens. They've got a mass issue with that. They draw a lot of power. Um, Ninety two still have an issue in certain parts of the country. 
and of course obviously with the IEPs because the amount of power that some of the larger sets of those drain is quite a fair bit and obviously if they've got two units put together with two pantographs it's an intercity train mm. same problems on Great Western oh. um, this is more about being able to get the right amount of power in the right area and keep it stable and if they can't do that then pretty much it just kind of gives up as as you know something you're not having it and that saves anything dangerous any overloads fires and things like that uh pendolinos they really do have an issue with it they always have since new uh, 91s are coming over to the west coast main line um i think just about all of them will i think because uh we are we have the open access operator that's going to operate out of blackpool and now apparently um another one wants to do the same out of liverpool and manchester um, so if that does happen, that should probably take up all 31 of them. Um, obviously with the Mark 4 sets as well, because they are plug doors, there is um, no reason whatsoever not to use them. The only health and safety thing when it comes to them is the, um, the, the retaining toilet tanks, which I'm not entirely sure if they've all been fitted yet or not. Um, so yeah. Um, it's, it's not just 91s, it's the same pretty much with all mm. uh, electric locos and units. I did, I just found it class 126. I'm, the more I look actually, the more I find different multiple units that have not been produced in model form, which actually, by rights, would be better candidates for model form. So the class 126, um, roughly the same operating time scale as the 124, but there was 22 built, but there are four preserved. Are they for the St Pancras line? No, up in Scotland. Uh, oh, those Glas things. Glasgow Queen Street route. Yeah, no. They and they actually... Things. They were replaced by uh, 47s and DPSOs. Yeah, but five of these were sold to Liberia. Oh, wow. To be used... Um, Used by Lamco Mining Company for staff trains. <laughs> what, a, what a strange choice. Um... And they've had more different liveries, actually. Um, so actually, the more I look at this, I, what is it about the 124 that is making us think that that is a, um, a good choice? Because it uh, seems well. to be... It's The only thing that it's got going for it is that very mm. distinctive front end. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm beginning to doubt the rumours a little bit because I'm looking at it and thinking, surely there was other stuff. But then again, Midland Pullman has yeah. been produced sold really well and arguably that's even more limited agreed um if i could just jump in there two comments that i want, I want to mention uh leslie gilpin grand central proposing a cardiff paddington service hopefully not using ideas the, the problem with that is is capacity on the great western um they're going to have to nick off with pass from gwr to be able to do it um, it, it definitely won't be using 800s. Um, the only way they could do that, of course, is using HSCs or using something else that's been recycled from somewhere else. <coughs> um, there will be HSC sets coming off the East Coast Main Line at some point. In the next 12 months, they will all come off the East Coast Main Line. Um, so, yeah, uh, th there's going to be HSCs available to do that, definitely. Hope somebody does. HSCs deserve to stay on the Great Western, in my opinion. Uh, but the, the, the main comment I wanted to mention there, Warrington train spotter, mate. Yeah, a 185 has not been made in model, I know, and this grinds my gears. Seriously. It grinds your gears. Well, yeah. I've got some oil for that. I know. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, it's a family guy quote. But the thing is, is that <laughs> 185 is an amazing unit. Um, I mean, they, they look nice, they sound nice. Um, they're really comfortable to travel on. Um, they're one of my favourite modern day units. So yeah, I want to see one of those made, definitely. Let's have a look. Um, good evening to Philip Page. Um, John Clifford, hi everyone, hi to you. Joining in live for the first time from Kinshasa DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, mm. I'm assuming. Oh, oh, let's get the map out. Yeah. Uh, scroll down, scroll down, Africa, gotcha. Tick. Right, let's put that away. <laughs> so, another country ticked off the list for the uh, the uh, <clears throat> Jenny Monday Club. Yes, brilliant. Don't forget, merchandise available. <laughs> so, um, 
It's awfully hot and humid here, actually. If, if if Brian starts to look like he needs guttering, that's why. It's just so humid. I always do, though. I, I, I sweat really bad anyway. You but... do glisten a lot, actually. Yeah. I'm not going to go in for the full rub, because um, <laughs> he's, he's got really aesthetically pleasing... No, um, like, um, oh, what's, the word, what's the word I'm looking at? Tactilely pleasing hair. <laughs> Have you had a trim recently? Yes. See, oh. Josh is watching this, and Josh said this. He said that when I come up here, that oh, you know, glistening. Yeah, exactly. It's the first thing that you'll 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 do on here, like at some point, you will. Is that what he said? Head. Yeah. So Josh, you were right. Yeah, she did. Okay. <laughs> you won the bet, Josh. So Brian's buying your takeaway for the next two weeks. That was the agreement, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Faye Olan, velvet head. Yeah, it is. It depends, actually. It's a bit like when you stroke a cat. If you go the right way, it's like oh. <laughs> if you go the wrong way. <laughs> it's like a Brillo pad going the other way. <laughs> um, yeah, Leslie Gilpin, Humid Income Brand 2. Um, John Clifford, normally live in Bolton. Oh, local boy. Ah, OK. Um, train spotting South East. The Hornby measurement team has been measuring the North London tank at Bluebell Railway. Actually, yeah, the North London tank... They, whilst you know, obviously built the North London line, they did. Are they the ones that later ended up on the Cromford and High Peak and had that sort of final hurrah sunset of use on an iconic line? Um, I can't remember whether they. I think they were eventually displaced by Hunslet Austerities, the J94s, or whether they supplemented the J94s. I'm sure somebody who. Uh, as um, more familiar with that would uh, be able to tell me. Philip Page, humid in Howfen too. I'm presuming Howfen is actually West Orton. Uh, Wolfie Wolf. Oh, Jenny, the XC90 cutting out at speed, I think. That sounds like a fuel starvation issue. Um, quite a lot of the time, if you're cut... <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, seamlessly there, talk about... You, your gears are grinding. Mine are fully <laughs> synchromeshed there. But yeah, check fuel supply. Um, you can check the pressure on your fuel rail. There should be a, a Schrader valve somewhere on there, if it's anything like the 850. And you can attach a pressure gauge and just see what your fuel pressure is. Now, you may have a blocked uh, fuel filter, in which case just change it. They do need changing from time to time. Or check your fuel pump if it's not pumping enough. Um, I think they've got like a strainer on them. If that gets clogged, if you've got some junk getting your tank somehow, but um, I would say, yeah, Wolfie Wolf, I've cracked it by changing the fuel filter. Uh, yeah, um, fuel supply, fuel starvation. And basically, any time you're demanding full power, um, that's when you'll have fuel starvation issues uh, flag up. Uh, let's have a look. Normandy, Northwest 83, evening, hot here in sunny Blackpool. Yeah, we're all basking in yeah. this humid heat. Now, the yeah. problem with the UK is that when it gets hot, it gets humid. Cause it's quite a wet country. Um, so, yeah, um, dry heat, I can manage. I love Tenerife because it's got a dry heat. And even though it's a lot hotter than here, because it's a dry heat, you can sweat, you can keep cool. It doesn't, it just feels pleasant. This just feels clammy. Horrible. Uh, Tony Britton, Jenny, is Brian's hair the same texture as the green brass mat you're using on Weir Yard? <laughs> Where do you think she got it from? <laughs> Actually, yeah, if you, you don't need to dye your hair, we'll just stick a Gage Master grass mat to your hair. <laughs> Uh, Faya Olan, did you ever do a video on how you built your video wagon? Mm. No, I didn't. You did but... mention this earlier, actually. Yeah, it's funny. Have you been airwigging? Mm. Um, but uh, I wrote an article about it that went into... Right, I need a run-up here, and I still will mispronounce it. Modliana Schwag's Magazinette, which is not how you pronounce it, but it's as close as I can get. Um, basically, um, I did an article for them and um, basically um, that's been printed in Swedish and uh, basically if you can read Swedish then you can read it there but I'm also going to be pitching an article to Steve Flint, he may or may not buy it, uh, about building a camera wagon because um, for reasons we can't go into, camera wagons will become very popular briefly in the autumn. Uh, Derek Grant, hi, just got YouTube ping to say you're on live. Yes, oh, we are. Here yes, we are. we've been here a little while now. Yeah, we have. We started just before seven. Yeah. So, gosh, doesn't time fly? We've been at 49 it minutes. Does, yeah. Um, David Cubit, the northeast coastline from Sunderland is not electrified. 
yet. HSTs, welcome here. Yeah, actually, was it um, Grand Central? Were they the ones that started running <coughs> HSTs into Sunderland? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Oh, there wasn't there a problem with the venting the exhaust gases from Sunderland? Because it's kind of at a slightly underground somewhat. I mean, they built a, a shopping centre above it, so it's kind of, <laughs> it, it was in a cutting to start with. <laughs> There's going to be a million and one jokes about that somewhere, about Sunderland and farts, I'm sure. Only from you. Oh. <laughs> Why, have you been there recently, farting? No, no, but... Yeah. Know. Who needs North Sea gas when you've got Brian? Yeah, um, definitely. I like transport. I spent two hours at... Um, is that Tyford? Twyford, that is. Twyford. Twyford, yes. Mm. In terms of interesting workings, so I saw two class 745s on test. Mm. You'll know what they are, won't you? I do indeed, yes. I don't. Uh, a class 66 and four class 59s. Mm. Yeah, Twyford's uh, pretty good for, for photography there mm. on, on Great Western. It is quite a nice... Uh, Nice little station. Uh, Wolfie Wolf, this YouTube ping is why I am always late. It's rubbish at notifying me. But don't worry, because, and this is like Synchromesh is working nice, smooth gear change. You can catch up with all of this video on YouTube. Once the live stream is finished, it gets processed up into a regular video that you can watch at leisure, re-watch the best bits, or indeed catch up with any that you've missed. Don't forget to like the video and share it too. Let other people know about the Jenny Monday Club. It's always great to have all of your company. But um, we've got Michael's underscore AFOL. Good morning from Australia. Well, uh, good just morning check. and good evening. Um, our mystery map. Uh, yep, we've got Australia ticked off. We actually, we've got quite a lot of people from uh, from Oz. Yeah. Um, in fact, somebody sent me a message saying um, they wanted me to say hi. And uh, I don't have the message to hand. I can't say where you are, but apparently at a fire station, they all tune in. Oh, so great work, doing yeah, great work putting out them definitely. fires. And I know in Australia, actually, they get a different mm. classifier. They get a lot of wildfires. So yeah, uh, just remember, if you're in the outback, be really careful about how you dispose of your uh, cigarette dimps and uh, don't have a barbecue where it's really <laughs> dry and that because you're just making work for a lot of people. So, you know, remember, always be responsible whenever it's dry. And that goes not just for the Australian outback. Yeah, let's but say with us up on the moors as well every year. Oh, God, year. yeah. We always yeah. get some clown who manages to set fire to yeah. the moors. Josh, yes, we do need to spend time doing HSTs. And um, that's something which we saw. Have you turned Josh yeah. into a crank? Josh has always been a crank. Yeah, definitely. Especially wow. HSTs. Yeah, huge fan of HSTs. That's cool for you. Yeah, man. definitely. And, um, yeah, Diffins, uh, yeah, 37s are now on the Rimney. Okay, um, what worked today? Um, oh, but incidentally, right, to know which important are interlude. You may have noticed that the lady is now dry. Mm -hmm. Do you want another one? Uh, no, I'm okay with that one, thanks. I'm if I, br if I br bring a couple up, maybe grand. Uh, well, you yeah, can bring another one up if you want to run out of that. You will, you will, <laughs> you will, you will, you will. You will. Right, so, yeah. Keep them busy. I'm just going to Not supplies. a problem, not a problem. So, yeah. We've got, let's have a look. Um, Sunderland sounds similar to Birmingham New Street. Mm, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So, yeah, um, Sunderland, um, I don't know, actually, it's not as bad as what it used to be. Um, it's kind of like the, the, the only plus side, I suppose, of a dying industry is that it's cleaner air and stuff like that. Not so good, obviously, for jobs and economy, but, you know, it's a lot nicer place now than what it used to be for that reason, I suppose. Um, but Birmingham New Street, Oh, I hate going there, I really do. So, yeah, the 37s out on the Rimneys. Um, well, I do need to get down there to do them, especially with Colas having the uh, the contract for it. I actually still need one Colas 37 uh, for Olage as well, so I'm looking forward to trying to get that. Um, that's uh, 254. I had all the others, it's just one that I haven't managed to get yet. So I should be looking out for that. Is that cold? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Leslie Gilpin, it's Rumney, not Rimney. Well, uh, yeah, it's kind of tomatoes, tomatoes, I suppose. It's like with every Welsh sign where they have an English pronunciation and a Welsh pronunciation. Doesn't they do? Um, I think they just have different spellings trying to get to the same pronunciation. Yeah, maybe. Sangoflin. Oh, we have this argument all the time. Yeah, we do. Um, Sangoflin. I... <laughs> Sandidno. Hairwine. Yeah. Come on, come on, after me, hairwine. No. What do you pronounce it as? No, it's not. I'm not. He's the same kind of bloke. He sees a sign for toaster and he goes, Towcester? Ta do you get Where? It? When was that? 
I don't know. I, that's, I, that's, I, that's a new one on me. No, what I'm saying is you're the kind of person who looks at a sign for, for toaster. Uh, there is a place in the UK called Toaster, but it's not spelt Toaster. It's spelt Towcester. Um, <laughs> but you're the kind of person who goes, well, it says Towcester on the sign. So uh, were you going like Leicester? Oh, I've got an interesting story about that. About what, Leicester? Uh, yeah. Um, having um, somebody got into a taxi going, like, can you take me to Leicester? Uh, obviously, they, they weren't from the UK. And this taxi driver's like, oh, I don't know where that is. And they were driving around here, Leicester. Do you know where Leicester? Oh, no, I don't. And then eventually it dawned on the taxi driver that this person wanted to go to Leicester. Because we have some very strange <laughs> yeah. pronunciation. I mean, I, I know in Australia you've got some, some strange pronunciations as well. But in the UK, words aren't necessarily pronounced how they're spelt. Seriously. Um, like toaster, spelt Towcester. You really just have to have heard it said because there is no way in a million years you would guess the con correct pronunciation. I like Bister, um, Bister as well is yeah. is not spelt Bister. Okay. Meanwhile, so, back at the ranch. Back at the ranch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, I was asking um, the question earlier about the. Portuguese 50s, somebody mentioned it, asked if there actually was any that survived. Another comment did come up that one survived. I can't remember who made that comment. Um, yeah, that's something which I'm happy about that one did. What's this? Uh, the Portuguese 50s. Uh, they are. I thought more than one survived. I thought there's one in a museum, but there's at least a couple of others. Yeah, there, 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 there was there was a couple of others, but some some. Um, oh, so one the of the tire kicker. the tire kicker came along and and ruined it for everybody. So yeah. How different were they for the, from the UK fifties? Uh, broader, and that's about it really. Um, oh yeah, they, they had a, a bigger turbo and no silencers. So you couldn't <laughs> really have brought one back. It wouldn't have fitted. Even <coughs> yeah, it, it, it would. It would have in the Great Central. Right. The low platforms and wide loading gauge, it would have, it would have. But eased. you'd have had to have sourced new bogies for it. Um, no, not necessarily. No, because they, what are they, they five would, foot. They, they, they were made to fit down onto um, normal English electric bogies, so they could have sat down on um, a spare set of fifty bogies. Yeah, I'm just, I'm interested now about what I want to check is could they run in Ireland without any modification? What gauge is northern? Is well, the whole of Ireland is like five foot. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, because every time I, we send something over there, we have to re-gauge the bogies. Yeah, no, no, I'm just right. Hold on, right. Irish Rail. I don't want to buy tickets. <laughs> Yeah, there's still plenty of HSTs operating around with various different operators. Um, cross country, uh, they still operate five three or four three sets. Inch. So I, I'm on a mission now to figure out whether um, Portuguese was it Portuguese? Yeah, Portuguese. Yeah, Portuguese locomotives could run an answer. So Ireland is five foot three. Yeah. So um, uh, rail. You look at that. I'll carry on. Yeah, you East do Midlands. That. Yeah, they still have quite a quite a fair bit actually. Um, Great Western are retaining a certain amount, um, and they're using their uh, GTI sets, uh, which basically are, are much shortened sets uh, for smaller routes. Oh, and they're taking over uh, certain DMU routes, which is great. Uh, but obviously, you're going to have to go a certain distance into the Great Westerns then to travel on them when that happens and it's the only way to do it at that point um two seconds oh, um scott rail has scott rail has started running them um and cross country are getting more sets they're not entirely sure yet whereabouts they're coming from they may be the lnar ones but actually are more likely to be as an urgency uh first of all getting them from the current gwr so yeah gwr stock that is currently being stored because they do need them in a hurry the australian hsts they talk quite impatient the australian hsts the xpts um they are finally going to be withdrawn they're still in service at the moment all of them they've all survived but they will be getting withdrawn at some point. They are getting new trains to replace them. Can I? Right. Portugal. Sorry, I was on a mission. <laughs> I was on a mission. Portugal has two gauges. Metre gauge, which is three foot three, three inches. Oh, no. Three foot three and three eighths of an inch. And they also have what they call Iberian gauge, which is five foot five inches and 21 30 seconds which you think that's a weird measurement but actually 
it's uh, one and two thirds meter. So it's like um, it's basically one meter sixty six centimeters approximately. So actually, you could probably regauge them. Just what two two and three eighths of an inch difference. So you could probably like uh, regauge yeah. them. They would run in Northern Ireland or Southern Ireland for that matter. With a little bit of jiggery pokery, but in the UK, I think they're going to be taking your coping stones off your platforms and hitting things. Depends on where, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, the lights at Great Central, not a problem. Um, but of course, Great Central was built to European loading gates. So that's the reason why they can. Um, very few places, really, even preserve railways, where they've got that much clearance and what have you. I don't think you'd probably find one, maybe two with short lines where they'd be able to accommodate but apart from that i think you'd be struggling um Wellington train spotter yes the the 225s the 91s they are coming over to the east coast sorry to the west coast from the east coast um in fact we should actually be seeing them quite soon also as well the 89 the flying badger um the one off that brush built which um Oddly enough, I still need for haulage, actually. Um, it's one then that you always think is just never going to disappear, and then it does. Um, that is receiving a full overhaul back into service. Question is, by who, for what, and where? Anybody with any gen on that, let me know. Hmm. Just look at that. Maurice Godfrey. Evening. Mentioning gauge, I had a double take at the Namibian gauge. Same oh. as South Africa's three foot six inch narrow. But they do use GM diesels from Brazil, oddly. Now, it's interesting that ah, Portuguese yes. and Spanish railways using the Iberian gauge mm. is pretty much the same gauge as some places in South America use, such that second-hand rolling stock does occasionally get sold on there for use. Mm. And it is possible, I think, to use uh, locomotives and stock on Russian railways, but no examples exist of this having been done and there's something like eight millimetre difference. You probably experience uh, excessive flange wear. There's that word again, flange. Um, but um, it would theoretically be possible. Yes, a few comments there about HSTs. Uh, Matt Rice, <laughs> you've got absolutely no chance, pal. Um, that's never going to happen in a million years. They might send some of the Mark 3s there, though. It's a bit of a dumping ground for all kinds of rubbish. So it's actually possible. Uh, but HSTs will not go to India. Um, five Circle. Well, actually, funny enough, but the Five Circle is supposed to go over to HSTs at some point. Five, oh, Fife. I thought you said Five Circles. I was thinking Olympics. No, Fife. Audi. Fife Circle. Right, but the, it's the, your accent. <laughs> but the, the, the Mark 2s that are on there at the moment are under contract for quite a long time yet. So the rest of the Scott Rail uh, HSTs need to enter service first before they can spare them to do that job. But yes, um, they are actually going on the five circle probably about this time next year. Right. Oh, so are you finished? He's finished, everybody. I can get a word in edgeways. Woohoo! See, you only have me on this show, you see, because I get the viewers up and you earn money off it. No, I don't. <laughs> no, not much. Maybe and a can or so. A exactly. You see, it keeps refreshments going. It does, actually, yeah. yeah. Anyway, meanwhile, back at the ranch. Uh, transporting southeast off to Canada for my holidays with the wife, no kids. Woohoo! Yes! Good. Going on Canadian train. Oh, my parents did that, the Rockies, and that's pretty good. And buying the model of train from Onboard Shop. Oh, oh brilliant. Mm, good, good little stuff. Me memento of the trip. Yeah. Just make sure you keep enough space in your luggage to be able to get that back. Mm. Uh, I like transport. Um, <coughs> uh, oh, yeah, Perth Exhibition. Yeah, the Growler Blackwood N gauge layout, the Perth Exhibition. Yeah, a bit far from here. Yeah, that's one I've never done. Um, I know it's a, I know it is, you know, up there mm. amongst some of the larger ones, isn't it? Perth, I'm sure it is. I'm not sure, but. Mm. Um, See, my first the, 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 the first thoughts, we were talking about Australia, and I was thinking, ooh, that's quite a long haul <laughs> flight to get to Perth in Australia, just for a model show. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. Wolfie Wolf, does anyone know if the Kidderminster to Bridge North, Seven Valley Railway, is still doing the full route, or if they closed the bridge for repairs yet? Oh, I don't know about that. I have heard that it's happening, but um, I have to say, I've Which not bridge? actually heard of them starting doing this yet. 
Is this the Victoria Bridge? Uh, Victoria, I think the, it, the King, the, the uh, Prince Albert Bridge. I oh, I can't called. remember the name of which one it is. Well, no, it was mentioned on one of the forums um, a little while ago when they were saying whether or not they'd be able to, you know, last out until after the gala and things Although like that. Ned Wood's so. name. The route is fully open. Right, there we no are. It, it is. It is due to cl partly closed though because so of that very they soon. Have to do? Uh, well, basically, the the bridge has got to a certain age now. Where it needs a proper inspection, and the, there is some repairs that they do no need to do, and some it's replacement iron, girders, so. which is generally pretty good for not just yeah. rotting away. But I, I mean, so I presume it's more routine maintenance rather than they found a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the viad. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Nedwood's name there's just got a bit more information. Yeah, oh, Richard Hall, Falling Sands Viaduct near Kidamis. Yeah. So it's not the big bridge, it's uh, something else. So basically what they have to do is that the trains that they're going to use, they have to move them away mm. from Kiddy further down the line. I put presume. Put them at or whatever um, and do the mm. maintenance there for them. And, yeah, it may just be yeah. if it's of a certain age, they have to redo the waterproof membrane. Uh, I know they've mm. done that with, I can never remember its name, the viaduct that's just mm. immediately north of... Is it Winchcombe on the, on the oh, GWR? Oh, on the GWR. Yeah, that took a while. I know this is not a small job they were talking about. Actually yeah, shutting well, it down well, for quite a number of months. Well, they did the um, uh, the one at, is it Haywards Heath on the Bluebell? When they did mm. the extension uh, and reconnected to Network Rail, one of the jobs that had to be done was a new waterproof membrane on that viaduct. Because I, I think yeah. it's basically on its original. And I guess they figured that the best time to do it was before they laid track on it. Yeah. So that got redone. Um, it is a big job, but it is a routine maintenance thing, not something really to worry about. You know, expensive, yeah. but you know, it's just something that you have to do from time to time. I like transport. Um, yeah, um, conversation going on there with Wellington Train Spotter about GBRF and getting uh, more electric trains. They, I'm pretty certain they're about to get the 659 stroke twos off DB. I think if anyone's going to buy them, it'd be them. So that'd be yet yeah, more diesel locos for them. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's an odd one as far as electric trains go. Um, I think that the the next lot of new electric trains to go to either GBRF or Colas will probably be 88s, if I'm being honest. Or the new 93s, Ali? The bigger version of the 88. Well, we've got Mark Wilson. How many classes of loco have been missed out? Was there a class 21? Yes, there yes, was. There was, yeah. Daypol have announced it in model form, along with the closely related class 29, which were actually 10 of the class 21s were experimentally re-engined to improve their reliability and were reclassified as class 29s. Outwardly, to the casual observer, look pretty similar, but uh, you know, to the rivet counters, anybody who really knew what they were looking at, there was a lot of detail differences. Now, I believe that the Class 29s were actually a very successful locomotive, but the class was too small for BR to persist with converting all of the Class 21s to 29s, and therefore they were withdrawn as non-standard. And it's a shame, in a way, that the 10 Class 29s couldn't have found other use elsewhere, because, you know, they would have been a perfectly reliable locomotive. In terms of other locomotives, uh, Class 30s never appeared, but the 30 is yeah. to the 31 what the 21 is to the 29. Now, this is an interesting thing as well, because locomotive classes that have not been released, a lot of them have been allocated to things. Also, like with the 30, uh, then came the 31, because it was when they still had the Merleys power unit in, yeah. before the English Electric one was dropped in, because the Merleys power unit was a complete flop. Um, but there's also other ones as well, like a 53, for instance, is Falcon. Um, the 48 was... But Falcon has been done as a model. It Falcon has, yeah. did do um, that as a model. The 48 was the it was Hawker a... Sidley one. Did that actually um, receive... Kestrel, was it? Did it actually yeah. receive that top speed? No, but the different um, classes of allocation with BR were kept. They were allocated to the prototype yeah. even if they didn't exist anymore on the off chance that somebody went back to the old drawings and go well, well now build that. I do that. know that for example never built the class 38 was originally if they were re-engineering the 37s yeah. uh, instead they became the 37 nines yeah um what else was reserved a 34 
Um, 34 was reserved for originally the Slim Jims, which were the 33s that were slightly narrower to fit yep. through. Is it the Tunbridge Tunnel or the Battle Tunnel? Yeah. Um, they were originally going to be Class 34s, but in the end they just became part of the Class 33s. But 34 was allocated for them. Class 19, there was a plan in the 1980s to build a small trip working shunting locomotive that would have become Class 19. Nothing really happened with that. I think it was just a concept design. It was the meant to be a more modern version of the Class 14. Um, and nothing, nothing actually, actually nothing happened. happened no. um, in terms of other things, a Class 72 is a, um, a reserved class code which was for an alternative electro diesel, I believe. Yeah, that was. That was. Um, oh, I'm going to say. Also, as well, in the 70s as well. Um, you know, you got um, 10,201, 20,201, right, yes. those ones. Um, also, there was classes allocated to those as well, even though obviously they were never going to get used. I know that there was a class 70, original class 70, mm. which was a um, third rail electric southern railway built locomotive, which, um, uh, was it as class 70 or class 80? Might have been the class yeah. seventy, yeah, uh, which had um, uh, booster modules, which basically it spins up a big flywheel to get it across the gaps, um, yeah. and they never survived long enough to really be um, allocated that. But I believe that class seventy was reserved for them. Um, I have a feeling there may have been a class. Was there a class at eighty? <laughs> Um, or not. No, there am wasn't I, a class am 80. Am I confusing that with a class 70? Um, Northern Princess, class 48s and 47s with different engines. This is true. Um, it's the basically the 48s, if I've got this right, are actually the generator ones, which were then became the early 47s, 4s, 401 to, what would it be, 411, 412, something like that. Mm. Um, those, I think, were the ones that were allocated 48 um, however, that is one that's been allocated twice. Uh, oh, that I know because um, the, um, the the Hawker Sidley one, which is that Kestrel the Hawk, the one that ended up in Russia. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the one that was originally allocated class 48. But yes, you're right. Um, some of the 47s are basically 48s, and they were the yeah. generator lot. So of course we've got two of them preserved: 401 and 402. But there's also I think 88 originally was going to be a um, that was oh was that the uh, the electric version of the 58 was the original original idea for that that's yeah that that was one of the uh, one, one of the Brel designs that never happened a bit like the British Rail Engineering Limited B R E L he just called it Brel you yeah know, just just so you know <laughs> uh, he's like he's like down with the kids with his terminology nah, I, I worked gotta, on the railway back in the day gotta, then and it was just bring you know, people along with yeah. you yeah. But the, the, the designs that they had then, um, you know, it was a bit like having, you know, the the um, 88s, um, which, you know, basically um, that had been allocated twice because the first time that was allocated uh, was meant to be for the 87 stroke twos that then ended up becoming the class 90. So the class 90 had been classified as an 87 stroke two, an 88, and then given the classification of a class 90. Hmm. So yeah, there's a few that wouldn't effectively either never actually got that numbering sequence because they ended up in a different numbering sequence or were just never built. But in terms of locomotives that did exist, I think it's probably safe to say that, I mean, class 30 doesn't really count because it outwardly it just looks like a 31. So I can't see that such a short-lived loco would ever really get its own model. I can't imagine um, that the demand is there for a 30. No, I mean, they, they were still building the, thir the what then became the 31s at the time. So, I mean, it's, it's not as if, like, you know, two or three hundred thirty ones were running around with Merley's power units. Well, there was thir but... 30s and 31s coexisted mm. because yeah. what happened was that they, they were basically, when they went for overhaul, they became converted to 31s. Yeah. Um, so there was a, a point where there was 30s and 31s, but they didn't carry tops numbers. And of course, at the time, these tops number allocations didn't actually exist. 
So, you know, they were still just tight ones, twos, threes, yeah, fours, I think fives. It's, what, 1972 when the first locos actually yeah. started appearing with tops numbers on the side. So it's interesting that British Rail actually gave them these um, classifications. I think that was a computer a based thing. Yeah. The, the, the computer that was keeping track of assets ran on tops numbers. But I've, I've yet to find out conclusively whether the tops numbers existed but weren't necessarily painted on the loco or whether the, the computer that controlled tops had to deal with the, the like the D numbers. So basically yeah. lopped the D off and it was that four digit number. I, I'm not entirely clear because I know that, for example, a class four diesel shunter mm. under BR ownership, no class four carried an 04 XXX number. Now I know in preservation, one runs around with an 04 triple uh, X number painted on the side, but it never carried that in BR use. And similarly, I'm always very curious with the class 52s, which lasted to 1977, why they never carried a tops number painted on the cabs. And how were they referred to in tops? Was it their actual D number? Yeah. Or did they have this sort of like phantom tops number allocated to them? I think the they probably had the phantom tops number, I'll be honest. I reckon they probably did. I, I've never yeah. found anybody who can conclusively mm. confirm or deny that. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just one of those interesting little quirks that by rights the 52 should have carried a 52 triple X number on the side because you think a lot of the class 24s had been withdrawn by 1977 yeah, but true. still managed yeah. to get a tops number yeah. painted on the side despite the fact they'd been withdrawn and then actually talking about <coughs> classes that have never been done in model form technically you've also got the class 11 and the class 10 and the class 12 and the class 13 now Outwardly, you probably wouldn't see a lot of difference between the 10, 11 and 12, but certainly the 13 is a model which I could see how... Well, actually, no. You can, you can get the 13, though, really. But well. it's it's from Olivia's, yeah. it's a conversion, it's, it's had to have human intervention yeah. post-factory release. But actually, no, actually, I, I wouldn't see Helgen do that for one simple reason. They'd be tooling up for a Class 8. And the only reason you yeah. do that is either A, if you're already doing the Class A, or B, if you're going to go head-to-head -head with Hornby and Backman. And I don't think the market is there. So actually, if anybody did a Class 13, I think you'd be looking at uh, either Hornby or more likely Backman. Would yeah, I, I would say water. definitely more likely to be Backman than Hornby. But at the same all time... Because B would be a different cab yeah. for their existing Class 8. Yeah, I think I'd probably actually able to be honest with you prefer Hornby to do it but I couldn't see I think it would yeah be I think it would be Batman yeah. and the way they do it is that they tool up for a different cab to slot on and maybe I don't know would you make one of them a double? you'd have to ha if there were two units with motors in I think they'd have to connect together somehow electrically you could yeah. do it on DCC it'd basically be a paired consist yeah. But I think that you'd need an electrically conductive um, bar between them. Uh, pretty much like how they do the 411 yeah. would be how I would do it. Um, but the, the Class 12 needs box pox wheels. Um, that I, Again, I think you're on a hiding to nothing making some of these models. I could see Hornby or Backman doing it simply by relivering. Uh, re yeah. their existing locos and technically Backman have done I can never remember whether it's a class 11 or a class 10 yeah but they just did a class 8 though, didn't it's they? actually a repainted yeah. class 8 <clears> but they did the Longmore Military Railway Basra which is either a class 10 or a class 11 sort of loosely speaking yeah but anyway we're, we're ignoring the comments <clears> here. yeah um, your nephew's changed his handle as well by the way just let you know up there oh um, what's he called himself um, OS something or other I think it was if okay remember. Hello um, to Zach with your new identity on yeah. witness protection. The Class 80, uh, Growler says, was a, was a prototype gas turbine electric. Is that the infamous gas turbine? Um, is it 18,000? Is that the one that's or set fire to things? Yeah, the one that killed a little kitty on a bridge. Hmm. Um, if it is that one, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Of course, that still survived, so that would make perfect sense. 
Uh, oh, actually, no, it was GT3 that killed the, the kiddie on the bridge, actually. Oh, is that the Kerosene Castle? Or was yeah. That... Oh, train sporting southeast on class 33 from Wareham to Swanage today. Oh, nice. I was driving to test and weed killing train and carriages test run. Oh, nice. Good work. Yeah. Good job if you can get it. Definitely. Yeah. 57305 Northern Princess. They didn't paint the 52 number because of the cast number's name. name. Ah, not entirely true. Almost, I though. Don't it's, think... it's, it's sort of correct. However... Um, I don't there think was that actually would have stopped them. No, they, they, that wouldn't have stopped. There was a running joke going on that whatever the Western region wanted, they got it, and that was basically what it was down to. It's the reason why they ended up with hydraulics in the first place. It was the reason why just about everything they've ever done has always been completely different to the rest of the network. Um, they they like to stand out, and that is a tradition that has gone on for a very long time since the dawn of trains. See, I think. That if BR had demanded it, there would, nothing would have stopped them just taking those yeah. plates off. I think a piece of brass on there, it just unscrewed off. I don't think that that there was would a, be a There was a few reason. westerns towards the end um, that had lost their plates because people had robbed them um, that did still have hand painted numbers put on them and they were still their 10,000 numbers. Uh, there was an interesting comment made that's just gone off the screen now um, about the fact that, um, like, for instance, D4033 D4, or whatever it was is 50033, but then with the peaks is completely random. There was one or two classes that were like that. I have no idea why they couldn't... I mean, obviously, they would be they wouldn't come into the works in, in, uh, in number order, but everybody else managed to get the, the the locomotive done in number order um just by changing mm. the first couple of digits and they didn't manage it with the peaks and uh, just just before it disappears random. off the top train domain hi to you always uh, watch your channel but first time i've actually watched live well it's always great to have your company great to have you along don't forget to tell all your friends about jenny monday club on the live chat it's always good to have you all along let's see if we can get 200 people watching live at some point we've, yeah we've, we've managed 120 in previous weeks <laughs> and i know that the summer um a lot of people are doing other things that can't necessarily watch live but let's see if we can get that magic 200 mark um, but yeah, always good to have you all along. Always great to have your company. Um, but yeah, I see. I, I, there is one fifty-two, which I have seen with the number fifty-two oh one five, and that was in Swindon. That was technically on the verge of being yeah. preserved, and they let the the people who were trying to buy it work on it, and they chalked the number fifty-two oh one five on the side, and that's the closest we can get. But Edward C. Tucker there says there is D7017, which had 35017. I believe that was only in preservation. Is that the though? Dutch one? Yeah. 17. I was looking at a model of that today, and uh, yeah, I was looking at close up at model shop in Shaw. At Arcadia in Models. Dutch. Yeah, it was in the cabin. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back that up. When I said, oh, I'm looking forward to the Dutch one, you think you could have mentioned how much oh, was you it? you said it afterwards. Well, it's full price still because it's new. Yeah, how much? It? I, I can't actually remember. We've been to Arcadia in <laughs> short, and this one has been hiding from me. I'm sure me. I, I saw that today. I didn't I'm sure see I did. You were looking at the BR Blue one in a second hand pile. Oh, yeah, but not that. No, no, no. I mean, even though it was actually going quite cheap. I, I actually had to point out, I did Arcadia in short. Yeah, you do your. You, you show off your goodies. You yeah, brag. I, I, I'm going to show He's this gonna off. He's going to brag now, but it's, it's okay because I'm going to brag I, later I, on. I picked up. Um, it, he doesn't do much second-hand stuff, but when he does get second-hand stuff in, he, well, no, he no, does... No. We tell a life. He does a lot of second-hand, yeah. but he prices very competitively, he so does. he doesn't he... hang around. Now, I have managed to pick myself up an absolutely immaculate and smooth-running DP2. Now, not that many, of course. It's a limited edition, although it's a limited edition of 2000, so it's not... That limited. I'm going to see if I, you can see the price there. Look at how much I paid for this beauty. Yeah, I told you, you're rubbing it in. People don't yeah. appreciate that. £69. And um, I picked up a Class 50 um, sound chip to go in it. Uh, which I... It's almost correct. It's, it's as, as near as you can get it without having the Napier horn. Um, but obviously, DP2 was fitted with a Class 50 power unit. Um, so that's almost correct. Um, so that's going in that. Um, I should be fitting that tomorrow. Um, and also, at the same time, I have just ordered a few little goodies as well. 
I I was always saying about Helgen Locos where I was kind of losing the love for him with different things that kept going wrong, bits and pieces falling off. It's the second Helgen Loco in as many days that I've bought. I also found on eBay, that's a reasonably priced, um, the Heritage Blue Liveried 86, um, which they don't come around very often, Helgen 86s, and I couldn't resist it. So I bought that off eBay yesterday. Um, also, I picked up sound chips as well for my Green 50 for Eddie Elgar. Another 08 sound chip for my Mainline Blue 09. Um, and I also found, up a, found a really nice bargain in having um, a limited edition Mersey Rail, or Crime Rail, Mm -hmm. um, yellow and white uh, class 150 which I believe I think was the Hatton's uh, limited edition I've been wanting that for quite a long time and I managed to find it on eBay uh, almost half the price it normally goes for so I had a bumper weekend and picked up some really nice stuff so yeah a um, few little bragging rights there but you know usually I don't find Ooh. bargains like that so I'm in a happy mood today and I've always wanted uh, DP2, so there you go. Um, find that <clears throat> Grandad Choo Choo, uh, I think um, it's 233, not 259. Um, the first one that was done, I think it is, because it's the Ulstrom one rather than the Les Ros. Because uh, obviously Hornby did the Les Ros one. And, um, Les Ros? Les Ros, Les Ros, I can't remember, I'm not sure hey. how you pronounce the surname. It's the driver's name they put on the side uh, of the preserved right, one. With you now. Um, so I think it's the one before that because I think it's the Ulstrom 1233, if I remember. But yeah, same livery, fantastic loco. Um, I so can't yeah, find I'm hoping any that's in good condition. Um, let's have a look. Uh, there's been a few mentions of the Perry People Movers. I actually had a ride on one not too long ago on the um, Stelbridge line, and I have to say, actually, I was quite impressed. I mean, basically, it's a transit van on rails mm -hmm. um, with a bus door, so it's a bit like old-fashioned, what I used to call bread vans, little mini buses, a little bit like one of those, but actually a lot of character. I quite like the uh, Perry People Movers, and I do think that a model of those going fairly cheap, I wouldn't charge too much if I was making them I would say that's an ideal project really for, for Hell Jam to do um, and yeah I'd buy one actually Yeah. Um, let's see um, uh, let's have a look see what other people have put on here now have you scoffed all the questions um, by the way yeah of course oh, I have that's grand um, pretty happy just paid 70 for a Dapple 52 Mat uh, Matavel I'm pronouncing that right Absolutely, that's okay, but yeah, yeah, that is a pretty good price. Uh, I saw one on eBay uh, earlier on today for a similar price, yeah. and um, yeah, it's it's a good oh. price for the Dapol one. Although, so yeah, uh, well done, Fair Olan. How long before we have you live in the attic? Well, we've been experimenting oh. actually. Uh, we got a, a webcam that um, we got quite cheap, but it's about as good quality as the one that's in this computer. But we need to check and see if it works with the computer up in the loft. I need to upgrade the network card at the moment. It's on 10 base, no, 10, 100 base TX, and it needs to be on 1000 base TXE, which is gigabit, just to get the bandwidth. Um, I need to do that, and then we need to see if the computer can actually run the software to allow us to stream live from you to YouTube. The other thing I need to do is fit an extractor fan up there, because at the moment, in weather like this, it gets unbearably warm with the heat being kicked out from the lights, from the computer, and from your sweaty bottom up there. It's a bit cramped up there. It is, yeah. yeah. But that's it, because of the maximisation of space that you've created up there, though, let's be honest, because it is actually a very big space. It is, actually. Be, but, you know, what's the point of having space in your model <laughs> railway room when, in fact, you could have model railway exactly, in your model yeah. railway room? Actually, that space in the middle is probably bigger than the entire footprint of the shed. Oh, which yeah. I had a layout in before. So there's still plenty of space. And I'm actually, I'm thinking of extending my baseboards down one side. Where, you know where the duck down is? Yeah. I was thinking I could have a point off the lead into that. Mm. I could extend the baseboard by maybe six inches and have a couple of dead end sidings there, which I can use for stabling locos. 
You could get carried away, though, eventually. You'll be controlling uh, remotely from down here. <laughs> yeah, eventually. I'll just have a little tiny hatch in the middle. But no, we can but have plans. I did widen the baseboards out in Trinity Road. Um, with those, it was a little bit less ambitious, a uh, few inches just to round things off and make the scenic area a little bit better. Mm. I don't think I actually added any running track in the show. In fact, no, I didn't. But what I did do was some of the scenic items, which I, th I thought, you know, fit rounded bits off quite nicely. Yeah. But up in the loft, I quite fancy having just, just two sidings that I can stable locomotives in. Maybe have it as my diesel stabling sidings and fill it with rats. I reckon I could yeah. probably get maybe eight rats in there. I do approve of your rat collection. You do, actually, yeah. yeah. 24s, uh, 25s, yeah. I want to get a 26 and a 27. They're the two on my hit list, but it's waiting for the right liveries at the right price. I think you should check out what's going on at the moment, actually, with those. 26s because... have been re-released. Yeah. I, I just had a look, but it's 120 quid. Yeah, no, no. I'm going to wait for them to come Yeah, down. they always come down pretty quick. Mm. Um, okay, a couple of comments there. Um, Trace put in South East. Um, he was in Bolton uh, visiting family and popped into Arcadia Models and got some good bargains. Oh, was as he well in there as... today? When was this? Um, oh, as well as well, we are moving to Bolton for his railway job. Really? Ooh, whereabouts okay. in Bolton? And um, and yeah, did you get a cup of tea when you went there? We got a cup of tea today. Oh, he always offers a cup of tea. I know. Well, I've never it's been a, in there. Before, it's a first, so. I, I basically, I, I've um, Brian was an Arcadia virgin, so yeah. I took him and popped his cherry. And that's why I had to buy a loco today. I just had to. You don't go into a new model shop without spending a bit of dosh. And actually, in Arcadia, there's always something. In fact, there's always more to spend your money on than you can afford. Good job, it... I don't own a checkbook, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, but your checkbook would be made of rubber. Yeah, it probably would. Like, yeah, everything, everything bouncing, yeah. yeah. Um, Warrington Train Spot. Uh, one if Batman or Dapol will do a model version of the 700. I don't think so. As another comment was made to you earlier, I think the size of the unit means that it's just not practical. It just um, makes them prohibitively expensive, which is why I'm beginning yeah. to doubt uh, Class 124. Yeah. I, I know that people have been like wanting it because it's quite an eye-catching front end, but I don't think they want it enough to be paying what will probably be mm. a five to £600 price tag for it. And that's my guess. And then you're on top of that. If you want to DCC sound fit it, you're going to need two yeah. sound chips. And before you know it, it becomes... Okay, at either end, it's... it's uh, yeah, I mean, you're looking at a lot yeah. of money. I mean, when you're paying out for the sound chips alone at well over £100 a piece. Hey, look, Josh is going to yeah. give you spends. Ooh. Can we hold Josh to that? You're going to get your spending money. Yeah. You I, got... could, I could do it at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although no, no, having no. said no, it's Josh's birthday soon, so I've I've got to yeah, I'm gonna have to keep what money I've got left now ah, and make sure that this I treat is him, this so. is cunning. If Josh is is a bit of a crank as well, can you persuade Josh that that he really wants the same model train that you want? And no, he's not into model trains. He's into the real things, but no, not model trains. Yeah. So. Josh, Josh, we need to spend spend a couple of good quality hours up in the loft, and you will, <laughs> you will learn to love. And uh, Leslie Gilpin, um, the 86 uh, with its Peter Pan nameplate on one side. I think that one does. Uh, I'll have to double check. Hopefully it'll arrive tomorrow um, and then I shall double check that. But I think Ooh. that particular one does. Um, if not, and the nameplates are not fixed to it, um, I think I'll be tempted to get an edge plate for Peter Pan to go on one side. Uh, Train Sporting South East. So. Um... Yeah, so you're selling your house in London. Oh, right, you'll be able to, to, to buy Castle on t Hill with the uh, amount of money you'll get from a house in London. Buy Bolton for that. Yeah, you will, actually, yeah. <laughs> I, you, I presume you've been looking at houses, but actually, compared to London, you're going to be pleasantly surprised how far your money goes. Um, but um, certainly, does that mean... So you won't be on the Bluebell line uh, anymore, but... <sighs> Got to be on the East Lanks then now, haven't you? I was going to say, yeah. have, you, have you already scoped out the East Lanks Railway? Um, it, you know, it's not the Bluebell Railway, but it's, it's different. And they've got the ski jumps. You can get some quality thrash yeah, going up and over the uh, the Metrolink line. Yeah. Um, I, I volunteered there for a, for, for a little while, and I could say it's highly recommended. 
Yeah, it was an old train domain. Regarding your using sand idea for ballast in the oh. loft layout, I did similar but used fine black fish tank substrate, 0.6 to 1.2 mil, which works really well and only cost about a quid a kilo. That's yeah, cool. I mean, there's a lot of other good alternatives. Yeah. I use kiln dried paving sand because it's really easy to get. I've just picked up another sack of it, actually, a 10 kilo sack from uh, B&Q. Other uh, retailers are available. And it cost us uh, £5.57 for this 10 kilo sack. And 10 kilos, actually, for most people, is more than you'll ever need. Now, I'm building a marshalling yard, so there's a lot of track to ballast. But if you were building uh, just regular scenery, it would go a lot further. Now, I do use sand as part of my scenery building, and you'll have seen this if you look at some of my scenery building videos, the how-to guides, and also the progress on the loft layout. Uh, and it's I call it my secret ingredient to get the right texture and it, it does produce a good effect but certainly buying ballast from a model railway shop you're on a hiding to nothing because half the time what you're actually buying is the same material that you can buy elsewhere for peanuts um, <coughs> yeah you got uh, a bag of uh, you know a bag of average scatter that costs you six pound fifty yeah just and go down the local carpet shop and empty out their hoover bag you yeah. can have it for now it's exactly the same <laughs> thing as bombay mix you know for well it's the contents of the hoover bag from the local tandoori yeah, but you still a... go and pay two pound a bag for it warning warning jasper carrot memorial <laughs> <local alert. laughs> yeah yeah <sighs> So, yeah, um, I, I think that um, you, you can be really savvy with your, your different ingredients, let's say, that you put into yeah. your, your scenery. And I think, you know, what you've got to remember is buying some of these materials from Pico or Gage Master, you know the quality of the materials you get and you know it's going to do the job. You're paying a premium for the convenience and the fact that somebody's effectively already screened whether it'll do the job or not. Uh, but <clears throat> if you actually, um, I think laterally, have a look in DIY places. A lot of these materials can be got relatively easily and a lot cheaper if you're prepared to actually shop around. And ballast is one of the biggest things, actually. You know. can, can I can I just say, um, transport in South East, you've already been touched to East Lancashire, you're moving your two steam locals and diesel local up there. That is fantastic news. Has he got, have you... Just one thing, what's your diesel loco? I need oh. to know. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Uh, give us a clue, mate. Um, and As that's it, definitely see, something to look forward to. Actually, two steam locos, they'll welcome them with open arms. Yeah. Um, diesel, actually, they're quite big on diesels there. So I am curious. Huge actually, diesel group. Because um, I know. Yeah. Um, because the blue, I mean, the two steam locos would probably be quite a big loss for the bluebell, but they, they have had a bit of a uh, snooty attitude to diesels in the past. So presumably, you will find it much, much more welcoming at the east flanks. Although I do hear that the bluebell has got a lot better in recent years. And the diesel group there, great bunch of lads. Um, and yeah, you, they, you used to volunteer. Though. I did, yeah. Um, the, the, you know, the, they've got expertise in just about everything. There. And they've got they, some quality rarities. They've got the last yeah. surviving twenty eight, last surviving class 15 yeah. so there you know there's two there interesting and they've got a 35 haven't they um i don't do, i don't know do, if it's there or not you see they've got um they've got, they've got 42. A 35 a 42 and a 52 um but i'm never certain which ones are around at the time i think the 42 is out and about and that's at seven valley and they've um, got 40 oh and actually um just um three class 40s there's a load of class eights as well but if you do go there there was a Class 8 that had its windows smashed in its cab, mm. looking really down at heel, victim of a vandal attack. If you could do something about that, it just seems such a shame that that Class 8 is being left to to get beaten up by the local scrotes. Um, at least get them to move it somewhere, get some glass in them windows. Because, yeah. um, you know, when they're gone, they're gone and you'll miss them. I Very will. true. Yeah. Um, there was a couple of hellos there as well. Um, Alan Beatty, hello and welcome. Um, I think I might. Every time you lean on that, I sort of move over to the left. Yeah, I think that's loosened up a bit. I used to be able to lean there just so I could get in shot better, and it never used to move. And now when I do it, look, <laughs> never used it's to do like that. It's like you've before. got a gravitational pull. No, I think it's just because I need a shower. <laughs> oh, actually, no, that would I'm be. I'm joking. Bad. I'm joking. That would be. You'd be like a white hole spewing things out. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Actually, no, you, um, you smell all right. You passed the sniff test. I've got a very sensitive nose. <laughs> um, um, right, okay. Um, yeah, 
Warrington Transport. We, this is the thing. We want to know what these rumours are for autumn. We had an idea that it would be, um, you know, the, uh, We've, uh, the uh, 124. I, I got a rumour yeah. off the record through a retailer um, saying that they thought it was highly likely it could be the Class 124. Mm. But nothing is confirmed. And we've put a few feelers out. And again, nobody has confirmed anything for good. Um, so we have no firm data. We can't be accused of uh, breaching any NDAs because we haven't signed any. Uh, we don't officially know. But we were guessing on a 124, yeah. class 124 trans Pennine unit, first generation. Mm -hmm. We could be wrong on that. And then we kind of went on and speculated about other reliveries in the yeah. main that we think would be really sensible for Backman to do. Uh, Can I just um, say, because the ongoing conversation there with uh, Traceport in South East, um, you've got a Class 33. I love 33. Um, in fact, any little soldiers like that, um, yeah, definitely. I, I actually really do like 33. So, oh, well, um, 9F. What I would... Yeah, ask, yeah what and is a, the and 9F? A, sta a standard um, Class 5. I would say, um, if possible... Um, it would be fantastic if we could meet up um, at East yeah. Lanks one day, um, uh, especially if uh, is you, whether or not your 33 serviceable or not. Well, he just, um, if it is, say then... he just test run it. Well, I don't know if it's the same 33, you see, because oh, I, right. I don't know how many blue the, belts have to be in the southern. Well, no, he was talking few, about so. Wareham and Swanage. That suggests yeah. it's on the Swanage Railway. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, please keep us informed with that. Um, yeah, we could. Well, maybe we've got a mystery guest. For yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, and yeah. also we, you know, we could do we could do some filming over these lands. I've done a lot of filming over at these yeah. lands actually. Um, a great bunch of lads get on well with uh, quite a few of the people there. Um, so, I've actually I've I've done maybe four or five videos over at the East Lanks. Technically, I've done more than I've I've done over at Hattons, and I I, uh, I do enjoy working with Hattons as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we'd love to do something that. That'd be good. That'd be good. For, uh, Valley Brook Model Railway. Um, good evening to you too. Uh, you're currently Jenny and sort. Brain. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. I get that brain, all the time. Brain, Brain. What surprised. are we gonna do tonight, Brain? You'd be surprised how many times I wrote it down wrong myself. Usually <laughs> after a few drinks, but you know. How can um, you spell your own name? I know it's bad, isn't it? Um, on sorry, in Redditch from Crew uh, meeting other YouTube modelers. Well. Fantastic. I hope you have a brilliant evening. Um, what's that? J. Paul Anderson, we don't really do um, a political discussion really on this. Uh, however, I did see the series and I thought it was fantastic. I haven't seen it, but there's oh, a lot of people going on about it. it. It's an amazing series. I see really what the is. Naughty Network has. Are, are yeah. you still on your first count? I'm, I'm, I am. I'm going really I slow love today. You. I was I, dehydrated earlier, so I'm taking my time. I love you. Do you want another one? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, the, the yeah the Batman 158 keeps getting put off all the time. Um, That's got to come eventually. It, it's it's a widespread unit. Yeah. A lot of people are clamouring for Without it. Sound two hundred and eighty quid for a two car unit. They want shooting. Are they having a giraffe? I'm being serious. Whew. You know they're on about sound versions being anything up to four hundred quid. I, I think it's almost like their exit pricing from the UK yeah. market. I, I think to be honest with you, I think that someone like Acuscale would be good at doing that that mm. particular model. I think it'd be right up their street. Somebody needs to bring out a proper one five eight, proper lit up and everything. But you know, you know. what Backman would do. They, they would do the same thing that they did when Hattons brought out their 66, which is yeah. just drop the RRP, which actually I think that that move um, actually showed up that Backman were charging too much for a lot of stuff. They, they were, you know, all of this talk about, um, like, oh, it's wage increases in China was actually a smokescreen for bigger profit margin. Yeah. And that 66, the fact that they could lop like 30, 40 quid or something off the <laughs> RRP, yeah. it's like, no, no, you're not selling these at a loss. Uh, I know that for certain. You, you just, just wouldn't do that. No. So what that actually highlighted was that Backman have been telling a few porkies about costs going up. You know, I'm sorry to say it, but they have if they can just do that. So, you know, own goal there, Backman. You just, just revealed your hand. Um, let's have a look. Valley um, Brook, um, Valley Brook <laughs> Model Railway, OMG! I love cider. And Josh, I, I, there is. Uh, I'm getting drunk here. 
<laughs> Proper lightweight. Um, Josh is uh, yeah. uh, uh, challenging you to a, a drinking contest with dark fruit. Drink you drink me under the table. Yes, yeah. you would. There's no contest. Yes, you would. <laughs> you actually would. Seriously, there really like, is no contest. Come on there. round and see the underside of my table. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, we will sort out that meet up there. Um, definitely, I think that would be a fantastic idea. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, if there's ever anything that I know with myself and I'm sure with Jenny, anything that we can do to help at any yeah, point, you want to go Because you ask. painted the 24 that's there. Was it D50542? Yeah, not this paint job, but the one before it when it first yeah, came out of Lodol, um, when I first started. Um, I'd love to see a model of it in Lodol, you know. Yeah, well, it had Rolly Rail because of the guy that owned it at the time. Um, yeah, with his surname Rolly. So yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I I do love sort of little souls of that size. Yeah. And the twenty four, yeah, there was me. It wasn't just me. I mean, I was a complete amateur at the time. I mean, I was. You were I the was, gopher. You basically. I was pretty much it, the gopher. He handed yeah. in the paint brushes. The guy who actually painted. And it. Um, there, there was about six of us, I think, that that, that painted the twenty four. Mm. Back into green after load all livery, and um, yeah, I, I did quite a few bits and pieces of the paint job and what have you, and I was quite proud of that. It was the first local that I, I helped, ever helped paint, so yeah. What else did you work on, or was that the biggie? Um, that was the biggie, but then I started painting the uh, painting and renovating the inside of cabs on different things like Western Prince, um, one right. of the forties, that kind of thing. And so transporting southeast, yeah. if you need your cabs renovating. Here's your man. I got paid for doing that at West Coast Railway at uh, Cav. That's something actually I can do, actually, is renovate yeah. the inside of cabs. Mm. So, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, let's see, what else have we got? Um, the Growler Blackwood N-Gauge layout. Why don't the pair of you try some buck fat? Oh, God, then things will get interesting. Yeah, that stuff's nicknamed Commotion Lotion or Rock This Hoose Juice. <laughs> Is the two different names that <laughs> if you ever watch Biggest Little Railway, there's a bit in the middle of that where it shows the big party that we had, like halfway through the the, the, the track laying, and then it shows the morning after, and there's just this shot of all the detritus, and there's two empty bottles of Buckfast on a picnic table. That wasn't just set up. Those two bottles of Buckfast did turn up at the hands of uh, the guy we called Scottish Martin. He just rocked up with it. It's like, you're in Scotland. You're going to have some commotion lotion. And uh, I tried a little bit and it's the most rancid stuff I've ever tasted. Oh, apart from the sake. I tell a lie. It was the second most rancid stuff yeah. I've ever tasted outside of sake. Still got that bottle downstairs. We Perhaps we'll do a channel giveaway. You can have a half. <laughs> I have my slightly used bottle of sake and it's horrible. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that doesn't surprise me what you're saying about uh, the 9F being next for overall, but you want to get your 33 done first and yeah. they don't like it. Kind of makes sense a little bit, really. Mm. Um, I can see... Yeah, that's from different things I've heard. I, I would expect them to be grumpy about that. Um, yeah. Not not particularly nice to put up with, especially being a local owner. Um, so yeah, Matt Wilson, uh, you've asked a couple of times, and I just haven't had a chance to respond yet. Yeah, the comments um, are coming in so quick. We're really are. sorry if we miss any. Western and Warship nameplates uh, that still exist. Uh, I believe they all do with the nameplates. Yeah, because in they one had one form or another. They had a mass auction for these things. Yeah, because they were actually collectible items. Yeah. And when the locos got scrapped, they didn't just melt them down. They were, the nameplates and the numbers, things like that, and the shed plates all yeah. got stripped off. And uh, they got sold, was it Collector's Corner at uh, London Euston? Yeah, yeah, I remember so, that. So they had a value even <coughs> then, and people bought them. And yeah. they, they, they've only gone up in value since. So I imagine that all of the nameplates do still exist. That mm. said, works plates are a different matter. And I did want to see a photograph of a North British works plate, believed to have come off a Class 41 warship, mm. Where you could, it still had the piece of plating behind it, and you yeah. turned it over, and you could see where the gas torch through an electrical conduit with the wire still in. Ah, and that's you how could most just, of them were cut, you see. Yeah, yeah, but you could just imagine <laughs> some little kid at the scrapyard going, Excuse me, mister, could I have that plate? And he's like, Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, don't burn your hands. That's how most people got hold of the side numbers and what have you off their favourite locos and stuff. And yeah, it's, I mean, that. It was one person I knew had about 300 of them collected over the years and stuff. Well, just the, the number Just painting. the numbers off the side. Well, he had a few works plates and things as well. 
Were and they all a, off scrapped locos? Yeah, they were off scrapped locos. He also had um, a couple of uh, class twenty noses as well. You know, just the very nose end. Um, he had a couple of those. There's a lot of them dotted uh, did it, around. Did the he country. have a house like Stepped Hose Yard then? Just full of bits and bits yeah, of slightly much, rusty. Yeah. I mean, metal. class twenties have a, a bit of a nickname of uh, whistling wardrobes, and uh, because of the doors on the roof opening like that, and if you turn one up, it looked like a wardrobe. Well, he actually did that with the two nose ends. Well, he um, made a wardrobe. Made a wardrobe out of them, yeah. It <sighs> looked really classy. It was it actually really did look classy. really good? Yeah. Can I can I just uh, can <coughs> I just go out on a limb here and ask? Was he married? Yes, he was. What did yeah. she make of it? Well, it, it looks more like modern art than anything else because of the way that he did so it. So, no, here's a question, just yeah. like my, my, my purely engineering mind kicking in here. Yeah. When you gas axe a number plate off, do you have to touch up the edges with a bit of paint to stop it from rusting? I have no idea. I'm, ju I'm just wondering, because surely they tell you. rust like anything because it's just bare metal. Um, just basically, before we... Uh, it goes off the screen there. Uh, Trace oh. in South East, thank you very much. That is very much appreciated next Easter. That's a date. Mm. Brilliant. Uh, Jay Paul Anderson, Jenny, will you be getting the Backman Rapier and Ransom's Breakdown Crane when it comes out? Oh. I'm interested, but the price seems a little steep. I'm really keen on it. I would really like one. But like you say, I think that the price is quite expensive. And I think it will be simply a case of... Um, I'll see what happens when it comes out. My gut feeling is that I might wait and see if the price drops a little bit. You know, if, if somebody like Hattons ends up having to fire sale some of them. And also give it a chance to percolate, excuse me, percolate through second hand. Um, uh, but at the moment, um, I can't remember what the RRP is. I think it's about 200 quid or something, which is a lot for what is effectively a wagon. Well, yeah. Um, I did ask uh, the CEO of Backman Europe about it, and it's not intended to be mechanised. They reckoned that that would add so much to the cost for something that so few people would actually use. It just wasn't justifiable. So effectively, what you're buying is a crane... A crane and three other wagons because you've got two mm. match trucks and then you've got the, the the jib match wagon to hold the jib when it's down um and when you consider that hornby double o made a you know, reasonable for the time a breakdown crane back in the 1950s and that sold at such an economical yeah. price that there's millions of the things around i mean my dad's got three of them for a start it does beg a belief how expensive these things are getting. I would like one, uh, but really it's just, I think it's simply a case, if I do really well with my AdSense revenue, maybe that's something I'll buy out of it. Mm. So that brings us round to the, the ugly subject of Super Chat is enabled. <laughs> um, can I just ask, by the way, um, Trace Point South East, which 33 is it you have? I'm intrigued to know. Uh, you are about you, thinking you, of painting it in... He wants to know blue. if he needs he needs to get haulage behind I, it. I do, but I was I still need quite a few thirty threes anyway, so it's mm. quite possible that I do. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm I'm really intrigued actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, you've asked quite a few times actually. Br Black Terrier Productions. I just want to step in and yeah. answer that question. Is the Helgen Class Twenty Six any good? Yeah, I looked at that and I just didn't get around to answer. I do apologise. Uh, well, well, I'm assuming it's the same as the thirty three, and in which case it's actually probably bloody atrocious. Ah uh, no, I think they've retooled them. Is, it, is that the retail one come out yet? I know, I know yeah, they've got I've the different... Yeah, I've just seen uh, them on hat. Ah, they're they're okay. about 120 quid. Right. Yeah, originally when the 26, 27 and 33 came out, they were a little bit basic. Basically, everything but, just kept falling off them. You had to super glue oh, parts back there on. There was like the, the bogies were very primitive as well. And if you didn't oil them up, they started to sound like Lima 33s. Yeah. But as far as I'm aware, they've been retooled, and certainly the Helgen Class 26 and the 27 are both on my hit list. It's just a case of waiting for the right livery and the right price. Well, I've logo me... Rail Freight 26. No, no, no. See, for me, I quite like... Which one of them got... Did either of the 26 or 27s get Network Southeast, or is it just the 30? No, just the 33. Wrong I'd love a, I'd love a 33 in Network Southeast, mm -hmm. and I think for the 26 and the 27... Um, 27, I just want BR Blue, tops numbers. 26, I could go with one of the other little liveries that they got. Did they get uh, Rail Freight Distribution? Uh, Rail Freight Coal. Yeah. For the 26, it was Rail Freight Coal that they got. I'd go for either that really? wow. or the Rail Blue, tops number, no large load. Wow, you heard it here first. Jenny going for a livery newer than the one that I'd go for. Ooh. Now, that, no, that, that doesn't happen very often. 
Yeah, but having said that, the triple grey livery did suit the 26 very well. It they used to use them in twos and threes on the um, the coal trains. See, I think they um, so, yeah. the 25s as well. Uh, no 25 got triple grey. You what, sorry? No 25. I got know they didn't, grey. but I think it, it would have done, yeah. And the 24s Shame. as well. See, I think all of those, the sort of the rats and the muck rats, I think they all suit the same liveries because they're roughly the same shape. Mm. So, yeah, I, actually, a 24 in Network Southeast. Could yeah. you persuade um, the person who owns it that maybe that would be? No, no, no. There's no way in a million years. Did load haul. Huh? I know, yeah, but no, no chance. Uh, I, I, I believe that since then it's been made apparent that you shouldn't do silly things with it. Because the class fifteen, <laughs> the class fifteen got um, was it um, rail freight? Rail freight, yeah, it did. Uh, the fact, and that was coal sector, I think, if I remember rightly. No, it was tri triple, triple. Gray, was it? Yeah, but with the coal sets of markings, I believe. I just remember it because yeah. it's um, the only time I've seen a fifteen carrying an actual tops number. Of fi was it fifteen oh three three? Do you know I cannot remember. It didn't uh, run yeah. in that livery. No. It was just uh, like a just coat, for, yeah. coat of paint to keep the rust off. Yeah, but, you know why not? I like liveries like that, and I would love to see from Backman um, class. Uh, I think it was a class ten running in preservation with a ten. XXX number on the side. Yeah. I'd love to see a model of that. And uh, I'd love to see the class four with the tops number on the side. Um, I love tops numbers. They appeal to my OCD. I, I think it's the best way of describing it. Tops numbers and OCD go together like counting your Rice Krispies every morning. Snap, crackle, pop, snap, crackle, pop. Do my special dance, do my special dance. Snap, crackle, pop. Um, anyway, back I to the do, ranch. I, I'm not. I'm not taking the pee. <laughs> I do have OCD, actually. But uh, but no, I mean on a serious note, though, the 26s are a very nice looking model. Mm. Um, and, and yeah. you know, I mean, if if they've managed to get all the parts to stay on them now, then mm. yeah, no, I could I could definitely go for one. And I do want one in a large logo rail freight. Um, be, simply because of the fact that the one that was always at Carlisle all the time <laughs> um, for um, the tanks that just down the road um, from Carlisle and you've the... still got plenty left in it no you not much you, you can have that one you're right um, this is a three can limit I'm a cheap dad. so that's that's basically why I want one of that livery but for a 33 um, I want one Dutch same as a 73 um, and yeah it, it, I was in a bit of a bit of a sort of close friendship with those size engines really like back in me bashing days when they were still running around doing passenger trains and what have you mm. so yeah yeah i mean 26s and 27s are two classes that i don't have in my collection and it's a glaring oversight from my point of view i'd happily mm. add them to my collection yeah uh, 35 i wasn't so bothered by until they announced that dutch one and it's the tops number that sells it for me it does look nice though it really suits yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. I, i'd love a model of the 50 and the intercity <coughs> livery as well um, oh yeah yeah because it really suits network southeast um for the same reason well, why, why, why don't you get in touch with ben's resprays and ask how much he, he oh, charges no, for them no, no, no. I just, I just wait. Yeah. I, I, well, I'm no fine. one's going to actually release one in that. Class. I buy my time. The only thing yeah. I'd ever do is I'd possibly be tempted to send off one of my class four shunters to be renumbered. Mm. Uh, but um, and actually, I'd have it renumbered as O four O one nine. And the only reason for that is because many years ago I built the Airfix kit, um, now Daypol, of the uh, the class four diesel shunter, and I painted it up in rail blue. Very carefully did the wasp stripes. And then I numbered it as 04019. So I did have a non-motorised one. And then when I had my break-in in my shed, mm. little scum buckets, the, um, they, they nicked my Class 4 shunter. Um, but not all of it, because it was glued to the end of the siding. So they, so. Left, the, they left the wheels <laughs> oh, behind. So I, I had six wheels. Yeah. Nicely glued to the track and a little bit left where the chassis had broken <laughs> when they'd ripped it off. So uh, I never found it in my garden. So like, they'd probably gone down the pub and had the head kicked in for having the, having, having the gumption to try and like, hey, would you buy this off me? What are you trying to pull? Uh, Josh says, wouldn't it be nice if some train companies did some retro liveries like some airline companies? Actually, there is, there is actually a few. Um, there's yeah heritage liveries. We've seen them on like eighty six. Yeah, uh, but 
different 87. companies now with some of the modern trains have been doing them. Uh, for instance, the, there's uh, a large logo 66, and even though it's only a 66 and it's a crap logo, yeah, yeah. it actually looks really nice in large logo. Actually, I, I must, I must grudgingly give that to you. Yeah. It, the 66 does suit. Large it logo. does. It doesn't look like a 66 anymore. You know what I mean? It actually, it's... it actually suits it better than the 37 suits that livery. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, you only said that because it would annoy me. Yeah. Uh, but also as well, um, on the Southern, there's a... Um, oh, which one is it now? A 508 unit, I think it is, that's painted up back in blue and grey. The the problem with different retro liveries now, using them now, if you have the likes of blue and grey colour or anything like that, is that if it has passenger doors, the doors have to be a different colour from the rest of the train. What, so people on the platform can see where the doors are? Yes, it is actually for the partially sighted. So therefore, a lot of the retro liveries on um, different passenger trains, they can't do anymore without altering them, which then defies the object. But on the East Coast at the moment, uh, there's a 91 that's painted back up into intercity livery, as it was when it was new, including the application of the tiny... Um, swallow was on the front in the grill. Wow, but you could do that because that's a locomotive. There's no passengers exactly. getting in and out of that. So they did that, but what they didn't do was do a rake of coaches to go with it. The two HST power cars, for instance, um, that were done up for GWR, uh, one in original condition um, uh, um, blue with the yellow and the other one in, in City Swallow livery, they did those as well. Uh, but again, they didn't do any of the coaching stock for that reason, trying to, you know, match them up. Uh, so at Valley Brook Model Railway, I'm heading off to scale model scenery as part of tomorrow's tour oh. representing Model Railway YouTube Community Group off to the GCR. Model wow, Railway yeah. co YouTube Community Group. Oh, tell me more, Sensei. Why yeah. do I never get invited to these things? <laughs> I probably do. And I probably like, oh, it's too far away. But at the moment, as everybody knows, we've been doing a lot of... of um, TV work is all we can say about it. So, mm. actually, this summer I've never been busier. So, well, but we can't know, talk about that. No, we can't. And no. obviously, we'd love to, yeah, but we can't. Yeah, one more time, and then we're done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, um, you may you may think that I couldn't possibly comment. Of course. Uh, was um, that on Mark Wilson, I think the Class Fifty Eight would have suited large logo livery. Yeah, because the cabs would have been. I completely yeah. agree with that. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think it's, it's actually got the shape that would would, yeah. would seem logical. And also, there was a friend of mine um, years ago who actually painted up a Class 60 model in large logo and um, gave it a, I think it's a peppercorn um, name, Old Ricky. Oh, right. I think that's a peppercorn. You know, it's, that's the same as Tornado, isn't it, a peppercorn? Peppercorn's the designer. Tornado was an A1. It was an A1. So there's an A1... The, there was an A1 uh, with the name Old Reiki, I think. Could it be? Yeah. Um, and it got basically the number and name for that. And it was Class 16 large logo oh. in model form. And it looked fantastic. All right, Valley Brook Model Railway. Yes. Google <coughs> search us M-R-Y-C-G. And... Oh, get that jotted down. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, so definitely. Let's see. Let's get that in the browser history. Yeah. Um, is yeah. it me or is it getting really It is, humid? yeah. We may have to wrap up early because it is so humid here. And we're in a room. We've got lighting. We've got a computer. Yeah. And no ventilation. It's a so. small room that is uh, basically it's Zoe's office yeah. and it is full of computer games. And we've got as you two know. people in, and you know, Brian basically he always needs guttering at the best of times, so he kicks off quite a bit of heat. Anyway, <laughs> what, what are we searching so, for? So, yeah, Transport in South East, yeah, thank you for that. It'd be very much appreciated. And everyone loves a, a, a BR Blue um, 33 with a tops number. Um, so, yeah, good choice as well. And if you need a hand with anything to do with it once it's been uh, brought up this way, um, then you just give me a shout anytime. I'm in Preston, so I'm not too far away, and I'll quite happily uh, pop down and lend a hand anytime that you need it. So there you go. Um, let's have a look. Um, who does the best class 86 in model form? Well, ask me that next time, and I'll be able to give you a proper answer because actually, in double O, you can only get either the Hornby one or the Helgen one. Um, and I have um, just um, uh, acquired a Helljam one, but it, it should arrive in the post tomorrow, so I won't get it until tomorrow, um, and that's back in Preston. Uh, I have had my eye on it for quite a long time. Uh, a couple of times I've almost bought a Helljam 86. I don't actually mind the Hornby one 
I'll be honest with you. Um, it, it's not a particularly bad model, but the old ones, um, the 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 cut of the uh, of the the molding was just a little bit too rough. But of course, bog standard motor in just about every other Hornby loco of its time, um, it ran pretty well. But you couldn't put much of a load behind it. So, yeah, I would personally say that the Helgen one should be pretty difficult to beat. Um, Josh, um, you're good with the paintbrush too. Yes, you are, and don't worry. Um, you know, I'm like I'm I'm always uh, one for dragging you along with these things. Um, and uh, yeah, the cab painting there, Transport Southeast. Um, yeah, not a problem. Um, that's something of which I can definitely do with cab painting. Do you do um, spare bedrooms as well? No, I I can only do Battleship Grey. <laughs> that's like, when, standard standard British rail issue cab painting. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a bit like the navy. It's like we do any colour you like as long as battleship grey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we might be able to pick out some of the fittings in red, but that's about as colourful as we do. <laughs> yeah. 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 If it doesn't move, paint it grey. If it moves, put a lick of red paint on it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so. By all means, I don't mind doing that, and uh, extra pair of hands there definitely drag Josh along as well because he's good with that sort of thing as well. Um, and uh, thanks, yes, it's brain. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing that, how many times that happens. To you know, be honest, we should change your nickname to 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 to. to like I've brain. got I've got a brilliant thing that I shared on Facebook. Uh, it's over a year ago now, and it came up as a reminder the other day. And it's basically got somebody holding up a protest sign. Instead of saying, uh, uh, brains not bombs, it says, brains not bombs. And then underneath, it's got a picture of a plane with lots of people jumping out with parachutes going, brain, 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 brain. <laughs> I just had visions of you belly flopping off a, off a, a diving board. Way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I love that post. Bombs. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Have you got like a Pinky in the Brain T-shirt? Because I think that, that I think that... I might have somewhere actually. Yeah, yeah I've got plenty of T-shirts like that. Pinky and the that. Brain. Pinky yeah. and the Brain. One of them's and, insane. Um, and obviously, the other is yes, the brain. I will drag Jenny along as well. Yeah, Not a problem. Yeah, we'll we'll have a grand day. Um, East Lancs Railway is only like ten minutes drive from here. It's a great place to be there so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I've spent. And a lot they of got time. some good model shops too. Right, I think we're going to have to push off in a moment because I'm yeah. I'm overheating. I'm in danger of starting to go see through with the amount of yeah, and I I have a filthy habit of smoking, which you should never do. But yeah, kids, don't smoke. It's really bad for yeah, you. Yeah, but uh, I've been sat here now for two hours now without fact, so I'm afraid I am definitely going to have to push off. But um, anyway, look, it's been really yeah. good having you all along. Sorry, we're cutting this. Actually, we're only cutting it about half an hour short, but. Uh, Yes, Josh, I am drunk. But, um, <laughs> oh, I was a Wolfie Wolf, I am now in the shed, but forgot I have no sound Thank on this you. old PC out here. Oh, get yourself a cheap set of PC speakers. I think Tesco and most other supermarkets do sell for about a tenner a cheap set of plug in PC speakers because that's what I've got up in the loft. But look, it's been really good to have you all along. Yes, Warrington Train Spotter 2778. Uh, Jenny is wasted <laughs> again, um, says Josh. Yes. Again, yeah. Well, I'm a, I, I have a, I have a one can limit, and I'm already on my third <laughs> one. But look, it's been really great to have yeah. you all along. Don't forget that after this video is uh, finished and got processed, it'll go up on YouTube, and you come back, watch all the good bits, rewatch it, and also catch up on the bits that you have missed. And uh, don't forget to tell all your friends about the Jenny Monday Club. Merchandise is available. Follow the links uh, which are hovering around somewhere on my YouTube page. Might have to look at a previous video. Sorry about that. But certainly uh, you too can get your stylish Jenny Monday Club mug. And I'd love to see any pictures of you holding them in interesting places <laughs> all around the world. And uh, also don't forget you can look back through the channel. We've got lots of videos there. We've got the regular Friday updates on the loft layout and that still goes apace despite all of the super secret projects i'm still finding a bit of time to make progress up in the loft and in fact i'm in danger of finishing it um no no model railway is ever finished they just get <laughs> they just get sort of embellished and uh, and tweaked and that yeah when you get told to stand away from the board your time's up yeah yeah but uh, essentially it's been great having your company always a pleasure to have you all 
So uh, until next time, catch up with uh, the other videos. We're going to be having a box opening and review on Wednesday. I think I've got, um, it's a Backman multiple unit of some description. That's all I will say about oh. that. And uh, we'll be back next week on Monday uh, for another Shed Chat live from the office. We should be moving on up to the loft, hopefully, in the next couple of months when we get all the tech sorted out to do that. But until then, we will be coming from the office. It'd be great to see you then. Uh, but until then, you take really good care of yourself. This is me, Jenny Cook, and as ever, Brian. Yeah. They're saying you take good care and bye for now. See you soon.